All right. I think this is working. I think it's live. Fingers crossed. Uh, if you are watching this later after the live is concluded, um, hello. Quick overview of what we're going to be doing in this live, just because it'll be easier to follow it if you are here live than if you are watching this later. So, plan for today, Q&A, as always. We're going to do some animation demo stuff. That'll be fun. We're going to talk a little bit about some uh, workshop stuff that I'm announcing. Um couple other surprises built in there and i'm also going to be uh enlisting everybody's help to make a video <laughs> this week so um the video is going to be about things i wish i knew as i was getting started in animation so if you have questions drop them in the comments um that's a brief overview for anyone who's watching this live after that way you kind of know what to expect um a bunch of other a bunch of other stuff in there too but those are kind of the big bullet points i've got Written down. So, what's everybody? How's it going? Oh, and I'll probably try to, I'll attempt to put some um, chapter markers after the fact. We'll see. Let me not make a mess here. What's everybody? I see some familiar, I would say familiar faces, but more familiar icons and names here. Welcome, welcome. I'm gonna give everybody a second to make sure everything's working. I'm also gonna check some stats on my end, and I'm also gonna update a link in a second, so give me just a moment for that. Let's see. I think... I think I'm just about good on that. Let me just double check this one thing real quick. All right. Click this, click this. I'll show you what I'm doing in a little bit. I just need to make sure this is working. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. Yeah, that is what I want. Perfect. So I'm just gonna duplicate this. Maybe, if it lets me. It's not gonna let me. Hmm. So everybody. How's it going? Uh so. If you, I left you a message. I did, I just saw your message. Uh, the text stuff you sent me, totally know how to answer those questions. The PDF, I'm gonna have to look into that with you. I'm not exactly sure. I, I only got to kind of skim. So yes, we will talk about that. Um, is that something that can wait until Thursday or do we need to have a red alert meeting later today? Let me know. <laughs> Um, welcome everybody to the live. I have not been live on YouTube in a minute. I thought it'd be fun to, well, I thought it'd be fun to go live for the kind of December. Um, I've got some stuff that I think you'll enjoy to see. I've got some demo stuff I'd like to do, mostly just based on what you want to see. Um, but some cool stuff, some cool stuff to show, some cool stuff to talk about. If you have questions, obviously we'll dive into those. And uh, one thing that I'm going to kind of jump into, just kind of lead off with, just it's important. I need to make sure I, I ask this up front so that we can kind of think about it as we go here. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video this month, which doesn't leave me a lot of time. I have waited a bit too long to work on this, but I was traveling for our anniversary. Anyway, not important. Well, it is important, but you know what I'm saying. I'm working on a video. And that video is going to be roughly something along the lines of how to, or not how to, um, things I wish I knew when I was getting started in animation, questions I had as beginner animator, and so on. So, I'm curious, and I, I wanted to include, I have my own stuff, but I wanted to include anything that you guys have going on in there. So, if there are any questions that you have now, or things that you wish you knew when you were beginning animator, or anything that you kind of want another opinion on, uh, those are questions that I would love to include in the video. So if you have any of those, throw them in the chat, drop in the comments. If this comments, if you're watching this after this live has concluded, but if you're here live, then you know, drop it in the chat. Let's talk about it, and uh, that'd be super helpful for me because I want to source some questions from you guys. But for now, let's hang out. Let's hang out for a little bit. Let's give it a few minutes before I dive into anything too crazy. Um, 
something, one last thing. I'm, I'm kind of on the other screen here, um, making a form that I need to just drop somewhere so that I can forget about it and we can move on. So give me just a second to make sure I got this. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I need to duplicate this. That was close. I almost just ruined everything. Make a copy. There we go. Make a copy. There we go. Sometimes you get distracted and you do things and you, well, you almost do things. All right. There's that. Here's this. Let's get rid of this one. that does that let's go ahead and drop this copy that throw it over here all right i'm basically done sorry for not paying attention i'm just getting this ready and now it's done save and i can take this away okay Perfect. Cool. I think we're good. Link to pages, link here. Save, delete, and save. How do I save? Okay. We're good. We're good. I think I'm done with that, and now I can pay attention to you guys. Sorry for the delay. Just like narrating what I'm doing so that you feel included. <laughs> I'm trying. Okay. Just drop this thing. I'm good. Okay, so I'm gonna read through all these questions right now, and we're gonna talk about it. And we're gonna hang out. Um, if you are at all curious about, um, this is loud music. Let me drop that down a little bit. Um, here we go. Copy paste. Save. Ah. Stupid bitly. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Now we're good. Create new link. Drop that in. It's a whole bunch of a whole bunch of stuff that I don't need. There we go. Alright. Excellent. Save. Okay. Done. <laughs> Done. Ridiculous. All right, if you are, I guess I should test this out. If you are at all interested in my Maya for Animators workshop, we did one in 2022. Maya for Animators workshop, we did one in 2022. Yep, okay, that's working, good. Uh, back in 2020, back in 2022, I did a Maya, back in, we're in 2022. Over the summer, I did a Maya for Animators workshop. It ended up being like, I think it was 27 hours worth of content like it was 27 hours long um it was all recorded so everybody who took it has access to it and will keep it forever uh and i taught everything that i know how to do in maya geared towards animation uh, there was modeling there, there was all kinds of stuff if that sounds interesting to you and you're like whoa i didn't get to take that i want to do that um there's a link in the description 
feel free to click it, and it'll take you to, I guess I'll show you where it takes you. Um, and if you don't see it in the description, you might just need to refresh this page, because I just updated it. That's what I was doing. So if you don't see it and you need to refresh it, um, it should give you the link. And let me just make sure that the form actually goes where I want it to go. Yeah. Oh, did I mess up the form? Shoot, hang on. Let me do this really quick. Ah! Uh, no, I think it's okay. I don't think I broke it. I think it works. I don't know. It'll be fine. You'll let me know if it's broken. <laughs> anyway, if you're interested, uh, what will happen is it will take you to this page. Um, it'll take you to the interest form. You can just drop your name, your email. You can let me know what part you're most excited for, and you can drop any specific requests if you if you have any. Um, and it'll just give me a list of everybody here. That way I know who was here and who was interested in this, and I can send you a link. And I won't spam. You're not going to go on some like mailing list or something. I don't spam people. I hate emails. So um, anyway, that'll just... I always start these things off with discounts. So if you're interested in that. This is going to be the probably the best way to make sure you you know about any discounts that you could get if you're thinking about doing it. So that's that. Okay, with that finished. That oh, and by the way, the workshop that I want to do, I'll probably do it in like January, February, probably February. You're probably not going to do it in January. We'll probably do signups and stuff in January, and we'll probably hold it in February. I'm not entirely sure yet, but just want to drop that out there. So. There you go. All right. With that out of the way, let's hang out. Let's chat. Hey, everybody. I see a lot of familiar names. Welcome back, everyone. And welcome to the, some some first timers, I think, too. Um, so first topic of today, uh, well, quick overview for anyone who popped in. Uh, we're going to do some quick q and I'm also working on a YouTube video that I'm sourcing questions for, so we're going to pull all these as well um and then i thought it'd be fun to do some animation demo stuff it's it's december it's been a while since i've been live used to do that all the time may as well right so uh, i've got maya open here i'm not opposed to opening other software should we need to but i'm most useful in maya so figured i'd start there all right so for anyone who just popped in and didn't hear me say this before I'm currently working on a video. It's actually sponsored by Autodesk, which is very cool. They're very nice over there. I always, I always, when I get to work with Autodesk, I always pitch them a couple of ideas. I'm just like, oh, here are some videos that I think could be fun and could be interesting. It could be a good fit for like a sponsorship. And there are some companies that I work with that they want, you know, maybe they just want like a little like integration thing. Where it's like, oh, this video is sponsored by so and so. Da -da -da. I haven't done a lot of those in this year. I haven't done any of those, but. Often I'll, I'll kind of make a video themed around whatever the sponsor might be. So if I do a sponsorship with NVIDIA, I'll make kind of a whole video about what you can do with XYZ service product or hardware that NVIDIA makes, right? So I'll usually try to find fun ideas to integrate it. Autodesk is fun because I'll kind of give them like, oh, here's like a Maya tutorial and here's this like workflow thing that's based around Maya. And here's like this random other idea. And they're always like, oh, do the random other idea that's like not connected to Autodesk or Maya whatsoever. They're just like, oh, that one sounds like fun. Do that one. I'm like, okay. And then I just, it's just, just fun. So they're fun. I like them. Um, the team over there is actually really, really nice. I think you guys would like them a lot. So the, uh, oh, sorry. Something. Oh my goodness. My cat, Luna, for those who know. She, uh... <laughs> looks like she trailed something unpleasant to a place you wouldn't want it. It is what it is. That's unfortunate. Uh, okay, we're gonna move on for that. <laughs> um... Okay, what was I saying? Working on a video. Yes, it's, uh... The video is basically going to be... 
um, things I wish I knew when I was starting out in animation or like questions I had as a beginning animator as a student, things like that. So anything that, that would have been really helpful to learn earlier, that's kind of what I'm focused on. I have a bunch of lists. I have a list of my own stuff, but if you guys have any questions or things that you would like to see in that video or things that you're like, I wonder things, I have had issues. Um, I wanted to source questions from the community. So, um, you know, drop those here and, and let me know. And uh, I'm just gonna take like a giant, not screenshot, but I'm gonna just copy the text of the whole chat basically and uh, make sure I hang on to that. So, with that all out of the way, that's what I'm working on. That's something I want to involve you guys in. Uh, we'll do some demos in a bit, but for now, I'm gonna read through a bunch of these questions. We're gonna rapid fire. And if you are asking questions right now and I'm like not answering them. It's because I've scrolled up. I'm at the top of where all the questions started coming in. And I'm going to try and work my way down as quickly as I can to get to the more recent stuff. So if you've been waiting on an answer, the people who, uh, yeah, you get it. All right. That's a good one to start with. Please explain, uh, Garrett asks, please explain the sir in your name. Are you a knight? So my first name is actually sir. For everybody who doesn't know that, apparently everybody thinks that I just put that in YouTube to be funny or something. My first legal name is Sir, S-I-R, and Wade is a middle name. So I go by Sir or Sir Wade. That's why I put it. That's that's actually my name. Um, so thank you for asking. <laughs> um, when I introduce my people out in the world, and hi, I'm Sir. That's, that's what I go by. Um, people who know me, I mean, in real life, that's that's, I get that question a lot in every context my like my immediate family my wife call me by my middle name because i grew up going by wade because i got bullied for the sir but then well, like college on i've gone by sir or sir wade so. so yeah now you know great question uh let's see also i got a lot of am students here yeah nice uh let's see Let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, if I miss your question, I'm not ignoring anybody. I'm just kind of trying to skim to like catch up here. So is it a good time to get into animation with all the AI and all that? Yes, absolutely. There are so many jobs for animation. AI is not going to really hurt that. In 10 years, we'll see if what I said has any uh, holes in, in it, but you know, but for now, yeah. It's never been a better time to be in the animation industry in terms of opportunities. Have you checked out the Cascader? I saw that they just came out and launched something, but I have not I have not yet tried it. I've been wanting to, and I'll probably make a video about it. But I haven't done it yet. Um, question, how can one make money through animation? Well, obviously, you can get hired at a studio. You can get hired as a freelancer, which is harder. I've done freelance for a bit, and it was rough. You have to have a, a network of contacts, or if you don't have a network of contacts, because no one does when they're starting out, you have to have a lot of good looking work that you can present on the internet and find clients or have them find you or you can pitch and things like that aside from that you can come up with all kinds of interesting creative ways to do stuff um usually just finding businesses or people who who are in need of some animation stuff that you can provide and honestly i've not found i mean it depends on the kind of like what you're looking for but like if you live in la where it's really expensive it can be rough getting started in the freelance world, but I mean, there's a lot of different creative ways to do it. Those are the most common, I guess. <laughs> Have you tried chat GDP, GP, GPT? I think I tried it. I tried it like once, like a couple of days ago. I don't remember what I tried to do. I think, oh, I remember. Do I remember? I took like a video transcript and I tried to like make it do bullet points or something. I don't know. I, I saw... I saw I saw JD's tweet. If, if you guys follow JD, Jean Denis Haas, he's great, great other animation YouTube channel. You should check out if you haven't already. Um, I saw him tweet something about it. I was like, that looks cool. What do I need to do to become a three D character artist? Just keep practicing. Uh, character artist, like a modeler, texturer, rigger. I'm not exactly sure what you mean, but um, I'm sure there's great resources that you can find online and just do the work. I know it's a dumb answer, but. Off the top of my head for a rapid fire question. That's the best I got. Um, let's see, scrolling down. What's the hardest to animate? Real long hair, real liquid, or real explosion? 
Um, I would say, I mean, those three are all simulated. They're not animated by hand, generally, unless you're like a 2D animator. I would say probably liquid. Is it harder to get, is it harder to animate for games or film, or are they similar? They're difficult in their own ways. Um, and it, depend, it depends on a bunch of things. The studio, the character, you know, the pipeline, a bunch of different stuff like that. I don't know if it's harder one way or the other. It just, I guess it just depends on like what it is that you're animating. Because something that would be considered simple in either pipeline could be easier or harder than something that's like really complex in the pipeline, you know? So I, I'd say they're similar. It's animation's animation and animation's hard. Um, let's see. How do you deal with possible large gaps between jobs or contracts? I would say that you always want to be increasing your skills, right? Doing the stuff that you want to be doing. So between things, um, between projects, either take a break if you got burnt out, you know, recoup a little bit, uh, and or do the stuff that you want to be doing at your next gig. That way, when you get the opportunity, you can show that you've been interested and you've been trying to do stuff in that in that realm. How to get your first job, I think is a good question. That is a good question. Um, I think that was written for the video. Let's see. Do you think I'll be able to juggle the military and AM? Planning on joining the AA, AM, the Air Force to pay for AM. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know what the workload is like over there in the military. I have no, I, I've not served, so I don't know what the balance would look like. Um, I'm sure there are people who have done it. You, Most people are in like, have a job or something when they're going to school at AM. So it's it's pretty common to be doing something. But I will say that by the time you get to class six, you're going to want more time to animate. So if you're, you know, it's just animation time consuming. So as you get to the more advanced classes, you can always take breaks. But um, hopefully, hopefully you've got enough time to really put the work and the time that's required in. So I don't know. Uh, I'm actually going to scroll down a bit here. I'm actually going to scroll down to the bottom. Uh, if you asked a question earlier, give me a second to answer some of the more recent questions and then drop it back in and uh, we'll get back into circulation because I feel bad. There's probably people who asked questions, waited, and then like left. Now I'm answering questions and they're not here anymore. That's not true for everybody. But there's people who are asking questions now that I want to make sure I'm answering. So, um, Jack Apple. Hey, so when I met you at Lightbox, I want to ask how we can best take advantage of the networking contacts we have made. Ah, for future job opportunities. Good question. Um, yeah, so if you go to a convention or whatever and you meet people, uh, definitely send follow-up emails. It's not too late now if you haven't done it. I actually haven't sent a lot of my follow-up emails from Lightbox and people I talk to. Um, but after events like that, send a follow-up, some kind of like, hey, it was great to meet you. You know, some context as to the meeting so that you can, you know, the person knows, like, oh, yeah, you're that person. Um that's like the thing number one to do if you do networking is just kind of follow up within a reasonable amount of time within a month month and a half is probably kind of you know so send send those emails now if you haven't already um that's the best thing because then you have that line of communication open because they'll probably go oh, yeah it was great to meet you too and then you have it then you have that like that you know that the the cup with the string thing you've got that like there for another time other than that if you were given any advice or reviews on your work make those changes you know add that stuff to the reel like take the advice use it and in a couple of months february march send it send back hey like hope you're doing hope you've been doing well i just want to let you know like i really took your advice seriously i made those changes I actually want to share it back with you just to just to let you know that uh, that I that I listened and I I cared enough about what you said basically to to follow through on that. Um, you're not asking for anything. You're just sharing that like, hey, thanks so much. This is what I did with your help. I appreciate it. And if it goes somewhere and if they have some more feedback for you, great. But like, you're basically just showing that you followed through. It's usually what you should do. Um, where'd you get the toothless statue? This was a, a limited edition collectible from Sideshow, a website that does these kind of replica thingies. Let me bring them over. So, he's very cool. 
I've had him for, I think I got him in like 2017 or something. So I don't think he's really available anymore. You'd have to find him on like OfferUp or eBay or something. I don't really know how you go about getting him now. Let's see. How do I break into the industry as a 3D modeler? I'm not a modeler, so I don't have like the best answers for you, but I mean, modelers are always in need. I mean, there's always modelers needed for stuff. So just make really great work, work on your topology, look at every resource and interview you can find to find like little nuggets of information that'll help your work stand out and then post that stuff online, share it, make cool stuff, make stuff you're excited about. And, um, you know, try to just get the word out. That's, and then apply to everything, you know, apply to everything. If you're not hearing back, make changes, be critical, but encouraging to yourself and uh, just keep going. Question, are animators always moving from studio to studio or do they stay in the same place? Both, depends on the studios. Um, I know a lot of people when I was getting started, I was an animation mentor and I was I was meeting other alumni. I was at this like 10 year animation mentor party. It was because animation mentor and AM had existed for 10 years and I was in school at the time. And so all these alumni came back and I was meeting all these cool people and I was talking to a bunch of people and I remember this one guy was like, oh yeah, like I just finished it, um, Weta in New Zealand and I'm going to, oh, what did he work at the time? I, I'm at ILM now in, I forget which ILM office. He was at ILM somewhere though, different country. It was either in San Francisco or maybe London. And he's like, yeah, then I'm going to NPC, which is in Canada. So like, there is a lot of hopping around. That's pretty normal. Uh, some studios, like like uh, DreamWorks, I think, is a good example of a studio that they're not contract based, so you just you work there. So totally depends. Both are normal. That freaks a lot of parents out, but it's our industry. Um, let's see. I've I've lost my place. I don't know where I was in the in the chat. Uh, oh, here I was. Um, oh my gosh, the questions are going faster than I can answer them. I'm just going to try and go really quick, short answers. Hopefully I can give good ones. Um, permission to use a sound clip of you explaining demo reels as a shot in my acting demo reel. Sure, send it to me. Tag me or something. I want to see it. <laughs> um, can you recommend sites to find good audio for animations? I have a whole video on this, and you should totally watch it. Uh, it's a video, I think it's like the lip sync, the guide to lip sync or something, where I really dive into like where to find your audio for, for dialogue shots. But YouTube is your main source. Podcasts, live streams, interviews, things like that that are more obscure. Don't go TV shows, don't go movies, don't go games, don't do animated content. Don't do anything that people have already been watching that already has acting associated with it. Find more obscure stuff. Do that. Um, will the stream be public afterwards? Cause it's not here. Yes, this, I'm not going to delete this video. This video will continue to exist at least for a while. Totally. Um, what daily practices should I do as an animator? You should animate as, as close to daily as you can. If you think about it like that, animation is a job. It's a career. It's something that you, people do for eight hours, you know, like Monday through Friday. So... If you're trying to get into it, you should animate like that. You should try to work on your stuff, on your work on yourself, work on your skills as close to daily as you can and for a good amount of time every day. Everyone's got different stuff going on in their lives, but you know, you won't get better unless you're doing it. Or at least absorbing it or analyzing it or like, you know, like immerse yourself in it. Just don't go crazy because it's, you know, you gotta live too. Um, also, I have some stuff to talk about for 2023, but we'll we'll get there too. I just I just thought of it, and uh, will you ever return to DreamWorks as an animator? I don't know. Who could say? I'm sure at some point, maybe. I don't know. Uh, so wait, I'm a 14 year old 3D animator and rigger, and I use Blender. I want to move to Maya, but I don't know how to start. Oh, that's exciting. Good for you for learning multiple software applications. Um, if it helps, and if it's within your or your parents' budget, um, I'm doing a Maya workshop. A Maya for Animators workshop in the next couple of months. And there's a link in the description that will take you to the page that tells you a little bit about what we did last time over the summer. And there's a link there to a form that if you're interested, you can drop your name and your email. And um, 
I'll, I'll share it with everybody as soon as it, I actually launch the thing. So aside from that, my channel is a good place to start um, and some others like it. Will this be a video live on your channel? I missed majority. Yeah, and we, we were only just kind of getting started. But yes, this, this video will, will be here. Uh, could you review my portfolio and let me know what is subpar? I don't have a ton of extra time to review everybody's portfolios. Unfortunately, I really like doing reviews, but I do do that on Patreon. So I think there's a link in the description to my Patreon where I do mentoring and different things like that. Um, I don't know how many spots I have left, but I do... I do mentoring and I do reviews and that kind of stuff. And I, there are a couple people in here, or at least they were in here, uh, who are in the mentorship, which is kind of cool. So, um, yeah, that's that's the that's the only way that I'm I really have time to carve out for for reviews lately. Have you gotten used to the forty ninety speed? Yeah, <laughs> I have gotten used to it. It it's I've been utterly spoiled by it. It's insane. I and. Here I have a 4090, here at my office, and this computer I've got a 4090. And at home, because I used to stream on a two PC streaming setup, because I had an older computer that's pretty good. Um, it was really good, but now it's pretty good. Um, so here at my office, I have the, the good computer, the new computer, which isn't that new anymore, um, with the 4090, 4090. And at home, I have my other computer that I, I try to make like my gaming station, but I still do a lot of work. I'm trying not to work at home, but I'm still doing work at home. Um, I have in that computer a 3080. Which I should put in the 3090. Anyway, it's I was I was working in Unreal Engine a couple of days ago, and here at work I'm just like flying through. I'm doing stuff. I'm just like dropping assets and like exporting stuff back and forth. And then and Unreal's fast, so I go home and I'm working on the 3080, and it's still very fast. But then there there was something that I was doing that was really intensive, and it was like being kind of slow. And I was like, oh, why is it being slow? Like I'm I. I and it's not actually slow. It's still a 3080. Like, it's, it's still very fast. But the slight delay I had to wait was, like, insulting. It was like, oh, I have to wait? So, yes, the 4090 has completely spoiled me. How has working with Harris been? Looking forward to more stuff with you guys. It's been fun. It's a lot of fun working with Harris. It, I don't have a lot of, like, creative YouTube-minded friends. Like, I don't have a lot of people that I know in this world. <laughs> Um, and so it's been like, I think Harris is the first person that I've like worked with consistently on like, like this kind of creative stuff. It's been a lot of fun. We, I, I love the brainstorming and we will occasionally do, uh, meetings where we will meet and talk about stuff, but it'll be over Apex. We'll be playing Apex as we meet. They're not always the most productive meetings, at least for a while, but they're a lot of fun. What do you think about Adam School? Adam School is great. Anim School, um, Animation Mentor, all those online animation schools are, are great options. Um, they all have their pros and cons. I've been meaning to make a video on that for a long time, comparing them and talking about them. But Anim School is great. I know some of the people who run it, and they're super nice. I've been meaning to kind of look more into their stuff and um, just talk about it more, but I just haven't had a chance. Should an animator know rigging and animation blueprints from Real Engine 4? Um, if you want to work in games, yeah. If you don't want to work in games, well, I mean, it's still a good skill to learn. Uh, there is a lot of great stuff. There's a lot of great stuff in Unreal, and I would recommend that people pay more attention to it. So it's not like you have to, but it'd be nice if you did. It's just more more stuff on your resume, you know? Is it ever too late to start learning animation? Wait, is it never? Is it never late to start learning animation until art college? It is never too late to start learning the stuff. There are people who are in their like 50s and 60s who are like, you know, I'm looking for a change. I think I'm going to start being an animator. And it like works. There are people who have started like later in life and they become animated and they work in the industry. Like that's totally a thing. Um, I actually did a video. You guys should all watch this one. If you haven't watched this video, you should totally watch this video. There's a video on my channel. Actually, what is it called? Let me pull it up really quick. Um, it is here. We'll browse my channel together. Um, oh, look, here's us. Ba -ba 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 -ba. You should watch all my videos if you want to see them. This one right here. Let's talk about Animation Mentor. I need to probably change the title and then maybe the thumbnail of this one. But this video is a really, really great video. I interview 10 different Animation Mentor students and alumni. And if you don't care about 
you know, animating in Maya or animation mentors at school specifically. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, this is, I talked to 10 animators of various skill levels who are learning or working in the industry based on the work that they've done through school. And we talk, I asked the same, like, 20 questions to each animator. And we get a bunch of different answers. Um, they talk about workflow. We talk about just all kinds of different stuff. And there's an animator in there who specifically talks about age. And he's, he's, he's a little bit older than I, I mean, he's, he's older than I am. And he's talking about how it doesn't matter. Like he's still learning the stuff and he's doing great. He's making great work. So anyway, that's a really good video. You guys should all watch. It's, it's worth taking notes. It's that good. And it took us months to make it. So, <laughs> you know, watch that. Uh, I think we're getting close to the time that I'd like to start doing some demos. Let me keep answering some questions. Um, as a quick refresher, in case anyone's just popped in, two quick things. Uh, down below, there's a link to my interest page for the Maya for Animators 2023 workshop. We did it over the summer. It was amazing. It was, like, it was almost 30 hours of content. It was 27 hours long. Uh, so we're going to do it again in like January, February or something. So if you're interested in taking it, link below. And a quick thing on that, if anybody is like, oh, first time I'm hearing about it. I used to teach, so if you guys, you probably know the story. I used to be a trainer at DreamWorks. I used to teach stuff and I, I did a whole Maya curriculum. Like I, I figured out and taught an entire like Maya course at DreamWorks. And when I left the studio, I missed teaching it. And so I started doing this Maya workshop every couple of years. And um, it was first, it was like, like at DreamWorks, I taught it, it was like five or six hours long. It was, you know, like an hour a day over time. It was five or six hours of content. And as of now, it's basically like 27, 30-ish hours long. And it's become so in-depth and so much information that it is it is more information just by volume. It's more information in this workshop than you get in an entire semester of a college class. And I go way deeper into way more specific stuff. The goal of it was to, from the start, has always been to give a better quality, like, Maya education than any school does for a fraction of the price. So if that's interesting to you, link below. Uh, second thing I wanted to drop is, what was the second thing I was going to say? Oh, well, I'm working on a video, basically things I wish I knew sooner or things I wish I knew or questions I had as beginning animators, a student, things like that. So if you have questions that you would like in that video, drop them for me. I'm periodically just copying the whole chat and dropping it in a, in a text document so I can go back through later and pull out some fun questions to include in that video, which I plan on filming probably tomorrow. I was going to film today, but my sister's in town, so I'll be going to pick her up in a couple of hours. So I'll probably film it tomorrow, and I will aim to have it out the 27th, because this weekend is Christmas, if you celebrate, and I, I'm not going to post a video then, and so I'll probably post Tuesday. That's my plan right now. Where do I live? Los Angeles, live in LA. Is prop, is prop slash creature animation a better foot in the door than general character animation? Oh, and well, quick side note before I answer this question. Um, we're about to do some animation demo stuff too. Um, thought that'd be fun, but I'm gonna keep answering some questions for a minute. Um, is prop slash creature animation a better foot in the door than general character animation? Or just curious the best path to getting your foot in the door. Uh, I don't, I, creature animation is generally harder than character animation because it's more advanced. You've got more limbs and body mechanics to consider. So um, creature animation is a nice cherry on top of a demo reel for sure. And prop stuff is great too for the same reason. It's just ex extra polish and things like that. Um, it's great to have it on there. I don't think, like I think if you did like a prop and creature animation demo reel, you could still probably get hired just fine, but you're, they're probably also going to want to see some character stuff just to know that you can. So I would say it's an additive thing, not a either or. Um, what tool do you recommend for hair? Fur, not hair cards animation. Mm, honestly, I mean, I can tell you what I've used, but I can tell you what I would probably do now. In the past, I've used XGen inside of Maya. XGen powerful it does a lot of stuff i've never particularly loved working with it just because it's kind of complex it's kind of a pain to set up like i don't i don't enjoy it it just it works um and it's powerful and all but at this point i probably just use unreal engine 
honestly. And I think there's even a, a script that just came out if, if you're a Blender user. If you did like the, the hair sculpting or like the hair stuff in Blender, there's like a one-click exporter somebody made that just broop, brings it into Unreal, which is really cool. And uh, so, yeah, I would probably use the Unreal Engine. I've noticed other recent graduates list their projects on work experience on the resume. Is that a good idea? List their projects on work experience. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. Uh, so with resumes, usually you have, you know, maybe you have like a education, like where you went to school, if you happen to have a degree, degree or something, or if you don't, it's fine. But like what you studied, there's like your, your job experience. And that might be, you know, you might just say that as project experience. It kind of depends on what the jobs were. But yeah, it's totally a thing. Um, I have an entire, like, I have like a whole thing on resumes and cover letters. I love talking about resumes and cover letters. So if you are applying to jobs and you're like, ah, oh, I don't know anything about that stuff. I wish I, whatever. Um, I actually, this was old. I'll warn you. It's like 2018, 2017, 2018, like long time, I think 2018, long time ago. Still all ve very relevant, but a little bit older uh, before I had the beard. There's a link in the description to my job application workshop that I used to do. Um, resume and cover letter information. There's like an hour or two of like lecture and information about like what to do and what not to do. And then there's like three or four hours of me reviewing every single person's resume who who was in that workshop. I've taken out all the personal details, but I go through and I that's got so much good information. So if you're interested in that, it's like 20 bucks. Um, and that's linked below. I will probably do that next year too. I'll probably do that March, April of 2023. Um, around the time that spring summer stuff is happening, so yeah, in case that's helpful. Um, let's see. All right, I'm gonna jump to the bottom of the chat. I'm just gonna, literally, I I try to kind of keep up. I'm just gonna drop my gaze to the bottom. How much proprietary tech and plugins are used at the bigger studios? A lot. Depending on the studio, a lot. Um, one of the best plugins that you can get access to that's not proprietary, but that most people use is Animbot. Um, I use Animbot. I have a video on it if you want to check it out. It's like a 40 minute long, like all the best things that I was using at the time. Great. Oh, Animbot, totally worth, worth it or just an extra? Totally worth it if you know what you're doing. Like, you know, if you can, if it's your first day animating, you can wait, you don't need it yet. But if you're like, doing some work, doing some shots, trying to get a job, like trying to grow, like Anabot's a great helpful thing. I'm looking towards Animation Mentor as my next go-to for expanding my skill in animation. I want to get into the industry to do this for a living. How hard was it for, how hard was it for you to get in? Uh, well, animation is a great school. I always recommend it. If anyone goes to Animation Mentor and you haven't signed up yet and you're going to sign up, tell them I sent you, please. I have a referral thing with them. Um... But Animation Mentors, is, it is great. They, they and any other school, Anim School, Anim, Anim School, Animation Mentor, and so on, it's not the school that's going to get you the job. They will give you the tools. They'll give you resources. They'll give you rigs. They'll give you a community. They'll give you information. They'll give you networking opportunities. They'll give you a lot of stuff. But the actual part that's going to get you the job is your demo reel, is your work, and that's all on you. So um, it's tricky. It's um, it's it's not a guaranteed thing, right? It's not like other industries. Animation is not like other industries where you 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 finish school and you get a job. I actually don't think a lot of industries are like that anymore. But um, in terms of you know getting your foot in the door and getting into the industry, it's not as hard to get a job at an, at a studio as people think. Speaking from the experience of I got hired to the training department at DreamWorks, like that was really cool. Okay, don't spam. I see Omesh. I'm going to call you out here. Don't spam questions. I won't answer it if you spam it. Um, uh, and I'm in, let's see. Uh, what was I talking about? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What was I saying? Industry. Um, right. So industry stuff. It is, and I'm not saying it's not hard to get a job in the industry. Like it, you know, it, it, it it's a challenge, obviously. Um, but... Getting your foot in the door at a studio, 
I'll just put it like this. When I was at DreamWorks, I was a part of hiring interns. I wasn't my in charge of it or anything, but for our department, I was a part of the process of hiring interns. That's why I looked at resumes and cover letters and that kind of stuff, which is why I love to talk about it. And, you know, we have a stack of resumes like this and a good three quarters of them are trash because they're not even for this position. They're just people applying to every job in existence. And so it's like, oh, there's like a lawyer applying. Okay, that's, why is this in this pile? What's this person doing? Like, what are all these, like, who are these people? They clearly are just like hitting the button to apply to everything. Because it's like, you know, hello, company. I would like to work at your, you throw those away. You're left with this stack. Half of them spell the studio's name wrong or like just completely, you can tell it's like a template and they didn't even fill it out properly. It's okay, you can throw the other half away because it's like, okay, well, again, they didn't care. And then you're left with the smaller stack where it's like, okay, let's look through those. And then I used to have three piles when I would sort through resumes. I'd have a, oh, this could be a good one. <laughs> yeah, right. And maybe, let me look at it closer and I would sort them. And so we have like, a, oh, this could be good. Where I would look more, I would look all, all of them later, but I would kind of put like, oh, this one's interesting. Oh, that's got a lot of the stuff we're looking for. A lot of the stuff we're looking for. And I'm just kind of skimming. Like, yeah, like, oh, this one's got some of the stuff we're looking for. They're student. They might have what we need. Oh, that one could be good. Okay. Like, oh, that's not a good one. Like, oh my God, what is this? It's like typos. It's like, it's just, you know, the text is upside down. I don't know. It's just like, it's just like, what are they doing? Like, if they can't make a resume look semi-professional, then I can't trust them to make the documents that we need made. So, okay, well, that's a no. They spelled DreamWorks wrong. And uh, they didn't put their name anywhere on here. Okay, that's weird, right? So, um, the bar is lower for entry-level stuff than you would think. It's the problem is that a lot of people don't know how to make resumes and cover letters because schools teach bad practices. They either don't teach the good stuff or they just teach bad practices. Um, and so, you know, you want to stand out and make good stuff and, and at the end of the day, you just have a decent application. That doesn't mean that like, if you're not getting calls back that you suck, that's not what I'm saying. It's just, it's, it's not as impossible to get a job at a studio as people think. You know, a foot in the door job, for example, um, much more attainable than, than people think. Everyone thinks it's this impossible thing. I got in <laughs> and I, uh, I didn't know much at the time. So let's see. Um, let's see. Minimum salary for a character animator completely depends. There's not an answer for that question. Unfortunately, it depends on the country you live in, the studio that you are going to work for, the type of animation you're going to do. Um, what I can show you, and everyone here is going to like this. If I show you this, um, I'm going to drop a link to this website. Check this out. Now, I actually don't, I need like an ad blocker. I don't know what these ads are going to be. There is this thing called the H1B salary database. I'm not going to spend a long time talking about this, but this is a really great resource, especially for all you international artists. If you Google, for example, Pixar, and we just look at all years and we hit search. This is a database. When when an international worker applies to a, a job and gets hired in the United States, you have to have a visa, right? And there's different paperwork and stuff that has to go into having people work. Every single time an international artist is hired at any United States company, that data is put into a database which is publicly accessible. It's not going to say the name of the person, but it is going to say where there's working, what the job title is, what the base salary is, the location, the submission date of the paperwork, and when they start the job. So you can actually look. Here we go. You can actually look and you can see what people are making at various companies at various positions. Um, and this will only show the international workers, but it gives you a good, a good basis to go off. So this is a really, really great resource for you to kind of look and compare against. So if we're looking for a fixed animator, Fix animator is the entry level position for animation at Pixar, I believe, as far as I'm aware. Um, so here's a fix animator who got hired in 2021, and it looks like they they were applying back in April, and then they got to start around October. I have no idea if it's remote. I've no like we have no details. I only know what you know based on what we see here, but you can see that they're making a base salary of 62,000 US dollars. So there's one point of data. Here's another fix animator. This person got a lot more, almost 80, and so on and so on. 
and you can you can look up all kinds of stuff so you know look up any company you might have to do some different searches job titles you could just search animator for example and you might have to make 3d animator character animate like look up different things to see what you get but you're gonna find you know if you look at recent start dates we've got lots of companies here's dreamworks activision and so on steamroller right so you can compare all the different rates like here's some different animators at dreamworks one's making quite a bit more than the other that's probably like a supervisor or a lead or a you know they probably brought someone in to do some really cool stuff because these aren't um very specific job titles right so anyway i dropped the link for that in the chat uh, you can just search h1b salary database it's h1b data.info all right um let me let me copy the chat again just so i don't miss anything Catching up. All right. Is it worth it to leverage my mostly unrelated degree in multimedia design? Aside from the principles of animation, there's very little overlap. That's the thing with degrees. If you can find something useful to do with a degree or past life experience in animation, go for it. But if you can't, like, find a great way to integrate it, then don't worry too much about it. It is what it is. Just make the best work that you can from whatever source that you need. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about trying to, like, use the degrees don't really matter in animation. You don't need a degree to be an animator. The only thing a degree is good for is generally visa type stuff, if it's international, again. Um, aside from that, it's it's all about the, the work and the demo reel. It's not really about the piece of paper that says, I learned stuff at school. Okay, can you prove it? Could you describe a good cover letter or make a video about it? Uh, I will probably do a workshop in like April, May, if you are, March, April of 2023. If you would like to look at my old stuff about it, I have a link in the description that takes you to my resume and cover letter workshop. Uh, it's like a replay. It's like a it's a recording from the class for a couple of years ago. What's up, Menji? Miss the Twitch streams? I know. I kind of do sometimes too. I do and I don't. I miss the live component. I miss going live and hanging out with people. Um, are animators artists? Like, are they artists? Yes. Yes, animators are artists. Game anim, video game animation explained, second edition by Jonathan Cooper. I'm not sure what that was in response to, but hang on. You mean this? <laughs> I literally have this exact book off, off screen. Um, oh, by the way, here, let me actually drop you guys a fun little link. Oh, actually, it's in the, it's in the description. Um, I have some links in the description. One of them is like animation books. It's like... I think it's like bit.ly slash animation books or something. But there's a link down there to some animation books I recommend. This is one of them. And uh, you can check it out there. It's an affiliate link. So if you buy stuff, Amazon gives me a cut. Costs no more to you. But we get to take some back from Amazon. So that's always good. Are overlap, are overlap plugins okay to have on a demo reel like Ragdoll Dynamics? Sure. Yeah. Overlap plugins are fine. You just would, you know, if you're in an interview and someone asks how you did it, you just say, oh, yeah, well, that part's not manually done. You know, don't make a shot where the majority of the shot is, like, simulated and then be like, look, I animated it. Like, make sure most of what's happening is you and then use that stuff to, you know, sprinkle in. Totally not not a problem. You could be transparent about it. Are you planning on doing a workshop in the summer? I'm not sure. I never know when I'm going to do workshops because I don't know what my schedule is going to be. So right now, the only workshop I know I'm going to do is early in the next couple of months. Um, so if you're interested in the workshop, drop, you know, hit the link below. Um, I'd like to do more. I just don't know. As someone who hasn't stepped foot on in the industry, do you think applying for senior positions is a waste of time? Probably because senior implies experience. Yeah, senior positions like a senior animator means that you've been animating for a while and now you can kind of be a, an upper level animator. Um, so if you've never animated professionally, senior's probably not what you're looking for unless, you know, this is some like really tiny studio that's making like YouTube stuff and you're like, oh, well, the quality bars, nothing close to what we'd have at, you know, a major studio. Hypothetically, maybe, you know, like yeah, you could, you could potentially, but. Um, 
in general. Yeah, it's a safe assumption to make. Oh, Animator's Journey. Thank you for the super chat. Is that what that's called? A super chat? That was nice of you. Was there a question or anything associated with that? Or are you just doing that to doing that to be nice? I don't see a question. Well, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. I like the little animated person in the mirror. That's fun. No question? Well, thank you. I appreciate you. Very nice of you. I need to get alerts. I used to have on Twitch, there'd be like a shiny alert that would pop up. I need to, I need to get that for YouTube. Just thanks for putting out your stuff. Thank you. Um, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, I want to start learning Adobe After Effects, but its interface looks scary. Any, mo any motivation for me, please? I'm good at Photoshop. If you know Photoshop, it's going to be a breeze. After Effects is just Photoshop with time. After Effects looks intimidating when you haven't opened anything like when you haven't opened anything like it before. But once you get the hang of it, it's very straightforward. Um, I used to teach After Effects at DreamWorks, and I'm a big fan of After Effects. Video Copilot is a great resource that everybody learns from. VideoCopilot.net kind of the go-to After Effects learning destination. Film Riot has some really great tutorials on After Effects, and I'm sure there's a bunch of other good ones too, but those are two that I, I like and I, I, I used when I was learning. Um, After Effects is going to be something that once you learn a little bit, you're going to be more and more excited to learn more because every little step gives you so many ways to like, well, I can do this now. Oh, I can do this now. Can I combine these? Oh, I can. So. Is there any way to improve my robotic animation? How to make it feel more alive? That's going to come down to workflow, yeah. Um, you need animation principles and you need a good workflow. You don't need to know exactly what the workflow is going to be, but it probably just means you need to add more keys and add more information because the computer's just making... It's just The computer's doing too much of the work for you, making it robotic. because It's being done by a machine. So uh, I would say... I would say... Uh, film reference, study it see what's happening in real life and then emulate that put those put that information in the computer will this live vod be up on the page later yeah yeah it will have you had a chance to do any vr modeling like in substance modeler not yet i'd like to try it i i haven't touched vr for a couple of years um i was like pre-ordered on the oculus rift like i was in vr early days but i just haven't had time in the last couple of years and i still just have my original rift so i'd probably have to up upgrade <laughs> How to handle Graph Editor in Maya? I have a video on that. I have two Graph Editor videos. Graph Editor 101, which explains the base premise of how to use it, and then the recent, uh, like, advanced Graph Editor. Uh, this one, Seven Graph Editor Secrets. This one, everybody should watch this video. If you have not watched this video, it's a really good one. It goes through a ton of useful stuff. And yes... Don't spam questions. I answered that one just to answer it because it's a good question. But if you guys spam questions, I'm not going to answer the questions. And if you really spam stuff, then we're just going to have to block you. So don't do that. There's a lot of people in here and everybody should have the same chance of their question being answered. So don't try to take up the whole chat because it, it, I don't like it. <laughs> um... How much work is normal at a cooperate, a cooperate working environment? Do you mean cooperative working environment or, or corporate working environment? How much work is normal is totally subjective, but how much work is normal is you come to work at a certain time, you do your work, and then you leave your work at a reasonable hour, and then you go have the rest of your life, right? Work is contained in that bubble. And if there's a project that requires overtime, you're paid appropriately for that extra time. That would be considered normal. I don't know how to answer it better than that. I love that people are recognizing each other from Twitch. That is totally happening. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. What's your opinion on AI-generated art? Hot button topic. Um... AI art has gotten very complex as an issue. As an overall content, I'll say it very quickly. I have, I, my thoughts are not that complicated on AI. I think AI as a concept is a great tool for artists in the same way, you know, people are going to be like, is it going to take our jobs or we should, should be worried, blah, blah, blah. 
people asked the same questions when computers came around, right? Like, oh, animation's done with a pencil and paper. Computers are going to take our jobs. No, it's a tool. Mocap's going to come and take our jobs. No, it's a tool. AI is going to come and take our jobs. No, it's a tool. Now, the way we're getting it right now, there's some ethical questions and some moral issues with the way that the the training models are being sourced with images. There's a bunch of stuff going on with like plagiarism. Like people are misusing it and the way it's being built isn't really taking artists into a consideration, which happens all the time, which is very annoying. So there's some issues that need to be dealt with. But as a concept, AI, AI is a great tool for artists to, to leverage. So, you know, hopefully we can fix the crap to make this like better and then we can use it to make better work. So... That's my, that's my general thoughts on AI, you know. Hey, so would you still recommend Animation Mentor? Yeah, Animation Mentor is a great school. Um, I, uh, a lot of my people I mentor are in AM. Remember watching your Twitch streams while playing Battle Battlefront two years ago? It was your last stream before you disappeared. I did disappear. <laughs> yeah, I was supposed to take like a break from Twitch and it's been like two years and I haven't gone back to Twitch. I miss it sometimes. Hey, Broken Tangent. How you doing, man? All is well here. Um, can I be an animator without being a rigger? Yeah. You don't have to be. You, those are two different skill sets. If you have both skills and you enjoy both of them, great. You're going to be even more attractive for jobs. But if you don't want to learn rigging or you don't want to learn animation or whatever, you don't have to. You can totally get a job as one or the other. Most people specialize. Where do I go? Where do I get your referral for AM? It's just verbal, unfortunately. I wish there was a button on the Animation Mentor sign up that was like, how'd you hear about us? Sir Wade. We have that for Pro Rigs. Um, if you guys ever sign up for Pro Rigs, this one, where I show all these, not those, those are the bad rigs I show in the video. I'm like, there's some bad rigs, don't get those. That's, that's unfortunate that those are what pop up when you mouse over, because those are not the good rigs that I'm showing in this video. Those are the ones I'm like, these are bad. Let me show you better ones. If you sign up for Pro Rigs, uh, there is a How Did You Hear About Us, and you can drop my name in there. Animation Mentor, when you sign up, you just tell them. You just say, hey, Sir Wade sent me. Um, let's see. I'm going to grab these last questions, and I'm going to throw them in a text document, and I'm going to answer these other ones, and we'll do some demo stuff. Um... Best book for basics of 3D animation, tell me please. The most common book is The Illusion of Life. Um, it's got Pinocchio on the front. Uh, it's linked below. If you click down below in the video, there is a link for animation books. It'll take you to an Amazon page with a bunch of different books. The Illusion of Life is the go-to. Um, there's some others like the Animator Survival Kit, which I have a video on. I actually have a, I'll tell you guys a uh, little secret here. I have a video coming out. I haven't worked on it yet, so I have to make the video still. But I have a video that I'm gonna be doing that is going to challenge some of what is in the animation survival kit. Because I believe it is, I am of the opinion that some, not all, of course, some of the book, the animation survival kit, it's wrong. Some of it is either, either wrong or just incomplete, but it does not paint a very accurate picture of certain mechanics and certain things. Most of it, that's not the case. There are certain things that everybody, you know, the book has a lot of information. Some people use all of it. Some people only use a bit of it. But there's some stuff in the everybody bit that everybody looks at. Even if you don't have the book, you Google and it pulls that up. And I believe it's either wrong or incomplete. Um, so, how dare you judge the Bible of animation? Actually, here. You guys want something from the Twitch days? Let me see if this still works. How dare you? Yeah, it still works. How dare you judge the book? Swine. Uh, yeah, no. The uh, There's some stuff in there that I'm going to be challenging in a video. It'll be fun. And then I'll show the stuff that I think is missing. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do you know Leron Topaz? Yeah, he's awesome. I met him at DreamWorks. He is so nice, and he's such a talented animator. He's like a wizard. I remember when I was at DreamWorks, he came by training. He came by my department for, for something, 
and I had, I was working on some kind of an animation, like off, you know, on my own. And I was having some kind of an issue, and he came by, and I had been told, like, oh yeah, he knows what he's talking about, ask him questions. And so I did, I said, hey, I don't know if you have a second, but um, I had this question. And he, like, sat down with me, and he, explained, he like, taught me a bunch of stuff. He's a super nice guy, super talented, yes. He run is great. Have you met Gil Figgins? I have not met him, no. Um, one of my coworkers worked. Oh, hey, got there. How you doing? One of my coworkers working on a couple worked on a couple of the pro rigs. rigs. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, those rigs have a lot of cool stuff under the hood. I'm trying to join your Discord, but Discord has issues verifying my phone number. Is there a fix for that? I'm not sure, honestly. I I don't know. That's like a Discord question. Um, I do not know how to help you, unfortunately. I hope you figure it out. I'm sorry, I can't be more useful. You are getting old. Why, thank you. <laughs> I think. Okay. What's your take on Blender versus Maya? Which one has the edge over another? They're both great tools. Maya is the go-to for character animation at this point in time. They are make, Blender's making big strides in character animation, and I'm very excited to see what they do. They're going to make a very different new animation tool. I think 2025 is what they're planning? 2024, 2025? They're going to make some great stuff. It's going to be different, and I think it'll be a, a very great alternative or a great option, right? Because we can use both. Um, just depends on what you're trying to do, though. Blender and Maya are both great for different things. I use both now for different things. Could you show a proper example portfolio for animation? I don't know how I would single out anybody's work to be like, this is what you're looking for. But, you know, just look up every animator who has a job and what they're doing at work and just admire it and just be like, okay, well, that's what I'm shooting for. <laughs> Um, I actually can answer that a little bit better. So quick thing here. The question was about showing an, a proper example portfolio for animation. So I will actually drop something here. Um, this is not necessarily like an announcement. I've said this before, but then the timing didn't work out for it. Um, something that I'm going to be doing in 2023. So actually the title of this video is how to become an animator in 2023, which is funny because for, it has two meanings, obviously. It's a sentence, how to become an animator in 2023. And we're talking about Q&A. Like, yeah, th there's that part, which is a little bit obvious. There's another component to it, though. When I first started this YouTube channel, the series, the entire channel, you know, because the channel is my name, and all the content was the how to become an animator series, which is no longer really the case. But when I, if you watch my earliest videos, I started every video of like, hey, everyone, welcome back to how to become an animator. I'm Sir Wade, and today we're going to da 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 I still have like the the muscle memory to say it all exactly as I said it, but um, the How to Become an Animator series on my channel was basically me documenting my creative journey trying to become an animator in the industry from my training position at DreamWorks and trying to get into animation. That journey, the How to Become an Animation, How to Become an Animator series is going to be resuming in 2023. And so I will be making a new demo reel. I'll be making, you know, a lot more actual animation animation content. Um, and so that will all be happening on my channel. So you guys will get to see all of that. So so hopefully I can, so hopefully could I show a proper example portfolio for animation? We'll certainly try. In the pro rig video, was that you singing the intro? Ha, <laughs> ha, that's very kind of you to think that I could sing that well. Uh, Rococo has a free ebook on animation and motion capture for games. If you want a link, I can grab one. Oh, that's cool. Rococo has some great resources. Um, I think I have that ebook, actually. I don't really remember. I don't think I actually opened it, but I think I have it. Maybe. If it's on their website somewhere, I probably grabbed it, but I don't remember. Whoa! My chat just refreshed and jumped down. Yeah. So there was a comment about the walk cycle being off and too exaggerated for the the survival survival kit. The walk cycle part is a big of a big piece of what I think is kind of kind of weird. Um, what is the animation movie did you watch recently? I don't know what animation movie have I watched recently. I'm not sure. I've watched a lot of movies lately. I've been too busy. Okay, uh, there are a lot of great questions here. You're gonna stream you animating, right? I'm probably going to record myself animating and then upload kind of a highlight with some narration. I don't think I'm going to stream it. 
It was it was too much. It was too much to be doing all that on Twitch. Um, the problem with doing animation live streams is that everybody thinks they're included in the creative process, which is not untrue. If you like, I would involve people and I would ask questions like, "Hey, what should I do?" But if I'm doing stuff on my own demo rail, then I I can't have that many cooks in the kitchen. I can't be animating with a crowd and like have like the feedback be coming in as I'm working. Like it has to be more of like, here's updates and you know I have to kind of go to specific people that I know and I, I trust their input and say hey what do you think of this what do you think of this and let's have a conversation about it and so that stuff will all be in the video but yeah all right uh please don't spam anybody no questions or general spam uh, again like I won't answer questions that are spammed and if you're just spamming in general then we'd, we'd have to We'd have to block you. What's up, Nick? Thoughts on advanced skeleton of Fermaya. Should I learn it? If you need it, sure. Uh, most people don't need to know it, but it's a, it's a skill. It's a tool, you know? Nothing wrong with it. Try it, you know? It'll take you a couple days to learn it if you want to. Uh, looking forward to the new year of goodness. Very thankful for the laptop review one recently. It's going to be a good one to go back for future purchases. Thank you. Yeah, that video tanked. <laughs> yeah, if you guys haven't seen it, uh, I did a video, a couple recent videos, just to shout them out. Some of these videos have not done that well. Um, I did a, a laptop review. That was kind of fun. That was a long process. I had, I was basically supposed to do a sponsored video for these laptops back in like November of last year. And like the things just kept getting pushed and pushed. And then I had schedule stuff. So I was glad to finally get that done. Crafted a video. Recommend everyone watch that. This animation mentor video has nothing to do really with animation mentor specifically. It's talking to students who who are going there or have gotten jobs from their work that they did in school. And it's just a lot of great information. So you should watch that one. Uh, so some good videos. Why would I bring up my videos? Oh, because the laptops. Would you say the animation industry is expanding? Yes. Have you met Keith Lango? I don't. I don't think I have. If I saw his face, I'd be able to tell you for sure. I'm better with faces than I am with names. Have I watched Pinocchio? Not yet. I'd like to. I really want to. Um. All right. Hold on. Prashant, this is your one warning. You are spamming me. Stop spamming. If you keep spamming, I'm just going to block you from being able to comment here. And that's no fun for anybody. So just stop spamming. Um... I'm going to put you in timeout. So you can you can think about what you've done. <laughs> um, you know, hang out, ask the occasional question, but don't spam. All right. New subscriber, just want to say thanks very much for your wonderful insights. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed the videos. Thanks for being here. Can you? Okay, this question. I'm gonna I'm gonna read this question as as I see it. Can you tell us how... What does it say? Can you tell us how we can show weight in our characters? It's all caps, so I had to do that. Uh, I actually have a video I'm working on for weight, but... Um, weight is about timing. Posing is important to make sure you're conveying the effort through something. It's like, oh, this is heavy. It's like, no, like, oh, it's heavy. Oh, like, you need the pose to, like, communicate. But timing is important. If you just have a character who's, like, walking, 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 it's like, it's okay. It's, well, the weight's not affecting them, but it's like... Gah. Yeah, slow, fast, slow, fast. It's like they're like they're dragging the weight, and then it right. So timing is important. Um, let's see. <laughs> weight is all in the hips, baby. The hips are kind of the source. Yeah. Um, let's see. What are your thoughts on hiring ref actors for reference? Uh, that sounds like more work than it's worth. I mean, it could be a great idea if you have a project that requires it, but, you know, that's motion capture for games. Like God of War. God of War. They have the actors who do the voices do the mocap for the games because they're actors. Um, but in general for us, like, that's a lot. Do your own reference or study the stuff that's on the internet or, you know, take from life. You probably don't need to spend money hiring somebody just for reference. Probably too much. I assume to be tagging you in your demo role. 
wherever. I just I just want to see it. You know, I'm not saying you have to like publicly like whatever. I just I just want to see it somehow. Um. Oh, does JD have a video on it? Two crucial weight animation tips. Well, there you go. I didn't know about that one. All right, top three books for animation. I have a link down below with uh, links to a bunch of books. There, my top three are gonna be in there. All right, let's do some demo stuff. What do you think? Um, what time is? It? Oh yeah, we're doing good on time. Let's do some demo stuff. You guys have any questions? Um. There's obviously some stuff that I kind of have as a fallback. I'm like, oh, I can show these things. But before I, like, just talk at you, <laughs> as I can do, um, I thought I'd just check first, like, does anyone have any questions about anything that I... Hopefully, I mean, if you're like, can you show how to animate an entire shot with two characters and a drag? Like, no, I cannot do that right now. But um, perhaps there's some stuff I can show you. <laughs> Let's aim for that. Will this stream be saved later on the channel? Yeah, it'll live here. I'm not planning on on, on, on listing the video. I'm watching Story Nice, so I'm your big fan. Thank you. Glad to have you here. Oh my, I missed when you had a free student version. So I think that Autodesk actually brought back the free student version, but it has to be authenticated. You have to actually be a student and you just have to, I mean, they never got rid of it. The free student version still exists. You just have to be going to for a while, it was an accredited school. Now, I don't think it has to be an accredited school. You just have to be going to a school. So you might have to do a little verification step, but it's still a thing. So the free student version still exists, and you can still get it. And it's actually a little bit more accessible than it was when I made that video about, like, why is it no longer free? They kind of brought that back a little bit, I think. You're welcome. Just kidding. I don't think, I had anything, to do. I don't think that had anything to do with me. Um, for anyone who isn't a student and is like, I don't have Maya anymore. Or I need Maya. Don't pay for commercial Maya. Friends don't let friends pay for commercial Maya. Maya Indie is what I pay for. It's like 300 bucks. It's like 290 bucks for a year, which is the same price as Houdini. I think it's cheaper than Cinema 4D. It's obviously more expensive than Blender, but what are you going to do? Um, Maya Indie is what you want. There's a link to it in the description. If you do buy it, I actually have a magic link. I don't know if it still works, but in theory, the link I have in the description for Maya Indie gives me a cut of the Maya cost. I don't know exactly how that works. It's like a, it's like a referral thing. Um, but, you know, whether or not you get it through my link, just get Maya Indie, not Maya Commercial. Do not pay for Maya Commercial. It's just expensive. It's not designed for you. Maya Commercial is not meant for you. It's meant for like major studios and enterprise clients. So, oh wow, there's a lot of questions here. Um, can you make a donut? Ha! Here, watch. Done. Donut made. It's beautiful, isn't it? Um, bye, donut. Mmm, delicious. I intend to do a massive thread of all I've learned. Oh, that's cool. That'll be actually really cool. I would love to see that. I'm curious who else will be in there. I'll watch that stuff. Easy walk cycle? There's no such thing as an easy walk cycle. Walk cycles are always a pain in the butt. Hang on, let me let me write down some of these ideas as you guys say them. Because I will lose it in the chat. And then I will be like, what were the things again? And then I'll just have another wave of things that I'll forget. Walk cycle. Let's see, looping animation. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Looping. A lot of these are also videos that I'm working on. When I say working on, they're videos that I'm outlining and I have to find time to film and edit them. <laughs> you still stream on Twitch? Not really. Actually, I guess I can just say no. I don't really stream on Twitch anymore. It's been like two years since I've streamed on Twitch. Um, I miss it, but I, I still don't have time. Um... What's your walk cycle example contrary to the story I forget? That'll have to wait for the video because that's the whole thing. Do you do YouTube full time now? I have for a couple of years, yeah. Might there be a free version of Animbot somewhere? No. There's A Tools, which is the old version of Animbot, but Animbot is there's a there's a cheap license. There's like a six bucks six bucks six dollar Animbot license you can grab or something. Um what plugins do you use in your workflow? I have a video on that actually, but Animbot's my go to. Um, studio library, I use a lot. Anything else in here? Uh, those are my two main ones. 
Demo motion trail or arc tracking tools? Sure. Demo trail. Arc tracking. Uh, let's see. So I'm just I'm just collecting your guys' inputs for what I'm about to demo. So if you have stuff you want me to demo, drop it in the chat real quick. And uh, I'll write it down. What render render do you use for rendering animation? I usually just play blast straight out of Maya. I do. I have a video on what I do to my Maya scene. I, I throw some lights in, I change some settings, and then I just play blast, and it looks like a render. It looks great. I just do that, and I recommend that. But if I actually needed a render, I very often move stuff over to Blender. I like the way that Cycles looks and how I like the... Cycles is fun. It's not even about it being better or faster or anything, because Arnold is actually really good. Um, it's just not as much fun for me. I don't enjoy working in Arnold as much. I, I don't... Um, I like Cycles. I like Cycles and I like Eevee. Usually I like the way Cycles looks better than Eevee though. And uh, I'm getting into Unreal for that too. So. Do you have any animations for animating a character like Sheriff Woody? I'm having some difficulties animating the ragdoll physics while keeping him moving like the original character. It's tricky. So you're definitely not like simulating any physics. You have to do it manually. And there's a lot of research and practice that goes into it and a lot of experience to, to be able to do that. In the case of Woody, you have four movies and a bunch of shorts to look at as reference and to absorb and to learn from. But if you're trying to make a demo reel, I do not tip for everybody. If you're trying to do a demo reel, I don't recommend using a character that exists in movies like Woody or Forky or any, you know, Buzz, things like that. Don't do that for your demo reels because we've seen him animated amazingly in like four plus movies. Can you top that? Because if not, if you can't match or top that, then there's no reason to use Woody. Because we've already seen good stuff with him, and if your stuff isn't as good, people will notice. Use original characters doing other things. Like, don't put yourself in a position to be compared against Pixar animators. Word of the wise. Let's see. What are the limitations of Maya Indy? There are none. The difference is that Maya Indy is designed to be used by people who aren't making a million dollars. Um, legitimately, that's the reason. If you make more than a million dollars off Maya, then you're supposed to buy Enterprise. But um, there are no limitations whatsoever. Greetings from Mexico. Hello. Uh, what do you advise me to start my own business in 3D animation? I mean, I don't usually recommend that to anybody. Animation's hard, and trying to start your own business on top of it is it's, it's a whole other thing. Like... If you want to freelance, go for it, but, you know, that's a, that's a personal choice. What do you, hold on, you're spamming, James, you're spamming. Um, let's see. What do you do to become one of the greatest anime maker? I have no idea, unfortunately. I, I apologize that you're going to answer, ask that question so many times and I don't have an answer for you, but I don't make anime, so I don't know. <laughs> You're going to have to look up some interviews or something or behind the scenes or, you know, find like the DVD of a Miyazaki film that maybe has some info, but I, I don't have an answer for you. Just practice, I guess. How do you, do you see stop motion to keep being used? Totally. Yeah. Stop motion is getting more popular. Stop motion, like it's, it's hard. You don't see it very often, but it's, it's happening on the internet. So yeah, totally. How do you use the, po so hold on. Uh, how about demolition? How dare you? Uh, hold on a second. Let me, let me see here. What do we get? Um, uh, facial expressions. Let me write these down. Facial expressions. Um, will the stream be available after? Yes. You can come back and watch it later. Yeah, totally. Lip sync. I have a video on that, actually. So I'm not going to do that one. I have a whole video on my lip sync workflow. It takes a while, so that's a better way to look at it. Pose library. Sure. I don't know if I can hit... I probably won't be able to hit all of these, but I'm going to do my best to hit a couple of them. Uh, oops. My, my chat keeps jumping. Is YouTube good to make a living as an animator? Ha! No. <laughs> no, if you guys want to see what I make on YouTube... Oh, here. Let me, let me not dox myself. Let me just make sure I go to whatever pages I need to go to intentionally. There you go. 
This month on YouTube, I've got 207,000 subscribers. We've gained 1,700 in the last month. Views are up. Watch time's like doing fine. My estimated revenue for the month is $656 for the videos on YouTube. Obviously, this does not include Patreon. It doesn't include the lovely super chat that Richard just dropped for $5, which I will answer his question in a second. Thank you, Richard. Um, it doesn't include brand deals and stuff. There's a lot more that goes into the business of working on YouTube, but um, until you get a successful channel going, none of that comes anyway. So you're looking at ad revenue, which is this. And this is with considering that I've got however many videos that I have and they're, you know, this is the totality of all of the views on all of my videos over the last month on my entire channel. And it's not a ton. So no, there's not a lot of money in YouTube for animation unless you kind of strike it big and get a channel that gets a ton of views on stuff. But that's a lot of work. So no, I would not say that the money is um, a particularly good thing to aim for on YouTube. Um... Let me answer this question, and I'm going to answer Richard's question, because this one caught my eye. Do you have any advice for a young artist who wants to pursue art as a career, but have unsupported parents towards the career choice? Please answer. Daryl, that is a tricky one. Um, I also don't know how young we're talking. You don't have to answer that question. That's not really a question, but... Um, not all parents are super supportive of the creative arts field, because it's less traditional, it's more risky, it's less defined, there's big question marks and um the best you can do is sort of educate them and 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 show them stuff as you learn it but the uh the best thing you can do is just keep being creative keep working on stuff keep keep creating and keep pursuing it and you know don't let it discourage you there will always be time to do the other stuff and so I mean, it super depends on your age like if this was like a you know, if you're like a teenager, if you're like 14 years old, I give you a different answer than if you're 17 versus if you're 22, right? Like there's different answers, but ultimately do what you can do to like, make sure you're doing what you need to do. Like there, there's not a like, well, you know, like Sir Wade said, you don't need a degree for, for animation. So I'm just going to slack off in school and not do my homework. That's a bad idea. Keep all your doors open. Try to like make the best play overall. And also, you know, try animation, see if you actually like it. Try art, try all these different fields, like taste everything. Um, the normal jobs will always be there. So you're not losing anything by pursuing art. And maybe that's something to help your parents understand in theory is like, as long as you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, art can be something else that you do as well, that it doesn't take away from your opportunities in life. It just makes you grow as a person and build your creativity. So just try your best to do it and inspire them through the stuff you create. I don't know. I don't know. That's a tricky one, but I wanted to talk about it for a second. Um, would a remaster say I took a short but woody buzz from scene? Wait, hold on. Would a remaster be useful in the context of I took, I took a short woody buzz scene from Toy Story 1 and redid it? My emphasis is texture and lighting. Hmm. It'd be a good learning experience. And it might be interesting to like post on social media or something, but it's not something I would necessarily recommend putting on a demo reel because you're basically saying, hey, I can do it better than this other artist. Even if that's not how you mean it, that's how it can sometimes be taken. Um, if you're trying to like recreate it and like remaster it and like, like redo it. But if you take it as inspiration, say, hey, I made the Pizza Planet location, a modern version. Or hey, I took the gas station where they find the Pizza Planet truck and I redid it. Like, do that. That's fine. Like, that's a great idea. Like, oh, I took that. I got inspired and I did my own thing. And I kind of, you know, went really in depth. But if you're trying to, like, recreate what was there, maybe don't do that. If that makes sense. For texture and lighting, it actually makes a lot more sense than for animation. I would not tell animators to do any of that. Like, animators shouldn't do that. They shouldn't recreate a scene. For texture and lighting, it's a lot more reasonable. I just kind of think about that for a second. Good question, and thank you for the super chat. Um, uh, oh, someone asked a question earlier that I saw it and I meant to reply to it and I missed it. It was something about like how useful is social media as an artist or something. Very useful. Recruiters find people on social media. They actively look. Um, and it can also lead to career opportunities, freelance and, um, other stuff. So yeah. All right. Back to the demo stuff. 
<laughs> so what you're saying is we should watch more of your videos because I make six hundred dollars on YouTube. Yes, that is what I'm saying. <laughs> um, what I'm saying is you should join my workshop and <laughs> support the Patreon. It no. Um, the videos are are free for a reason. Enjoy them, use them. And uh, when I do a sponsored video, just you know, click on those and let them play. <laughs> That's really what I'm saying here. Is like when I have a sponsored video, go ahead and click it. And if you're not into it, just let you know, leave it open somewhere. Just just let it be there. Just let it play, and you know, tell your friends, and you say they should click it too. So, you know. Now let's see. Uh, adding details and hands. That's a tricky one. I'll write hands. Mash. You know me. I do love my mash. Okay. It's even harder when you're living in a state that does not have animation studios. Yeah, totally. I understand that. Uh, the, the last couple of years have made remote work a lot more of an option for people, but yeah, it's still rough. Is your animation workshop still available to buy the videos? Will you be making another one? So, uh, yeah, quick thing on the animation workshop. I have my summer animation workshop that I did. It is in existence on, like, Vimeo On Demand, but I do not recommend you purchase it there. The workshop was designed to be viewed live with a replay that exists later. And as a result of that, if you went and found it on Vimeo, the, the, the summer workshop I did, it would be very expensive. The price is marked up dramatically because it's to discourage people from actually buying it. If someone really wanted to, they could. But it's not designed for you to go buy it over there. It was designed to be live, but it exists there as an option. It's 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 the thing. So yes, I will be doing another workshop in the next couple of months. If you're interested, there's a link to, down below and you can grab that. Um, or you can sign up and basically just let me know you're interested so that when I actually launch it, I can just send an email and say, hey, Workshop's happening. Here's a discount. If you want to join, here you go. Um, so yes. Here's an idea. Animated scene from robots, but it's hand puppets. I love robots. It's a great movie. <clears throat> idea for demo. How to blend between different animations, idle walk, action, etc. Well, that's an unreal thing. Um, I don't really have a way to show that right now, but I will be doing some game animation video stuff at some point. If you're still doing questions, what's your hot take on remote animation jobs? Do they exist? They do exist. Um, I think hybrid is the way to go. I think hybrid is the best way you could work at a studio because you want to be able to go into a creative environment and work with other people. That's what I would love to do. I work, I've work. i worked remote for like five years at this point. Ever since I left DreamWorks, way before COVID, um, I was working remote from home. And I've done that for years now. I miss going and working with people. <laughs> But I wouldn't want to have to go in every single day. So hybrid's the way to go. Do you think studios need more Houdini artists or Maya artists these days? Totally depends on the studio. Both. It just depends on what you're doing. Because Houdini is like effects usually. <clears throat> I haven't seen any videos on the end about micro manipulators. Me neither. And but let me write that down and I'll look into it because I don't even know what those are. Nick, are you doing the online epic, online epic intensive? I haven't looked into it yet. Are they doing another one soon? I haven't really been paying attention. <laughs> I need you in the office every day in Utah. What a commute that would be. <laughs> Maybe if you could get me like a like a subway card, but for airlines, you know? I'm gonna have to expense that to the company. What's up? Anabot tutorial? I have an Anabot tutorial. It's like a 40, 40 minute long video I have on my channel, so you should watch that. Um, Nicholas, thank you for the $10 super chat. That's nice of you. Howdy. Does experiencing studio culture outweigh finishing a project? I just want to ask, what's in your DM Twitter? Sorry, I think I missed it. I don't check my ch Twitter DMs very often. Um, does experiencing studio culture outweigh finishing a project? Well, to be fair, I haven't worked in the animation department at a major studio, so I can't answer exactly probably what you're asking. But from my experience, yes. Experiencing studio culture and just like being a part of everything that's happening is more exciting than finishing a project. But that said from the experience of not having done much work on the project, just working on like the studio itself. So I imagine that when you're very invested in the actual project, there's probably a big satisfaction that comes with that, especially over time. Right, as you work at a studio longer, 
the magic of the culture might kind of dilute a bit, but then having a certain project you're really passionate about or really hate, having it finished might be a huge relief. So that's my that's my take anyway. I'm good at video editing, motion graphics, but my main goal is to be an animator here in India. There's less pay for animators and that's not a good project. Can I continue? Sure. I mean, if you're good at something and you enjoy it, do it for as long as you want to do it. And if you want to do something else, just work on that until you can get good enough that you can transfer, right? Um, let's do some demo stuff. I think we're good to go. Winter Epic and Tips of Oh, that's... I did see something about that. February. That's cool. Okay, well, I'll probably try to swing through. <laughs> I'd like to. I'd love to. Um, I don't have any specific plans about the Epic, but I'm pretty sure that I'll pop in and, and check it out. Oh, that's right. Osmond is doing one. I did want to go and see his talk. He's great. Um, yeah, I'll probably go to the Epic. <laughs> if anyone doesn't know what we're talking about, let me... Uh... Here. The Animation Collaborative. The Animation Collaborative is a school that we all love here. Um, they're also the team that, the same team also put together Pro Rig, which is great. But the Epic Intensive, I'll just quickly show this. Oh, I have a new page. Cool. Oh, I guess a new picture. Yeah, uh, this is going to be great. It's a big old thing, so. Great people. Yeah, uh, would recommend. I've been to this. I've been to like four of these events and they're fantastic. Would highly recommend checking it out. Looks like it's on sale for the next couple of weeks. It's like 200 bucks and a lot of stuff. So if you're interested, there's that. Um, let's see. Oh, Alfrey. Alfrey, am I saying that right? Uh, thank you for your super chat. Uh, what do you recommend? Is it better to model your own characters and then animate them, or is it better to buy models and use them? I only ask because I'm planning to make a short animation film. If you are an animator, go find a rig. Don't do it yourself. Let people be good at what they're good at so you can be good at what you're good at, right? Don't try to do everything. It's just gonna look bad. If you try to make your own rig and you don't do a great, good, can't do a great job, then your animation is gonna look bad too. And then people are just gonna think you're not good at any of it. So go find the assets and then do the work with the assets. So if you're an animator and you're looking to make a short film, that's what things like pro rigs are for, which is funny because we just showed them. Go to pro rigs and you just pull that up. Wait, that goes to the wrong. That goes to the wrong page. Oh yeah, that's the wrong. That link is broken. That one's correct. Here we go. Pro rigs is cool. Bunch of great characters. I've made a video on this, so if you haven't seen my video on this, you can go check it out. Or you can use these for short films. I love the robots. I need to do a review on these. <clears throat> I used to have that too when I was in school. Like, I gotta make everything. Because someone tells they, they tell you that you do, and they're wrong. They're lying to you. Alright, let's do some demos. Would you recommend fresh grads make the move to the West Coast? Wait. Would you recommend that fresh grads make the move to the West Coast for animation? Remote working is the thing, but would, would being there would physically would being there physically increase your chances? I'm gonna full screen for this because I want to make sure I save you some money here. Don't just move to LA because you want to be where the jobs are. Bad idea. Because you don't know whether you're ready to be hired. And LA will suck your wallet dry. LA is expensive, the West Coast is expensive. Everybody does it. Everyone's like, oh, I got to go out to where the... No. Don't do it too early. There's nothing wrong with moving out here. But don't move here just because you feel like you need to move here. You know? Like, um, <laughs> full screen. He is serious. <laughs> LA's really expensive. You have to have a lot more than you think saved up. Whatever number you think you need to have saved up, triple it and then move here and assume you're going to lose it all to rent. Um... I need to do a video on this topic, but when I moved, so I'm from Southern California. I'm from like an hour and a half outside of LA. So I grew up here basically. I didn't go to LA much as, as a kid. But when I was in, how old was I? 
20? 19? 20? 20? I think? I don't know. When I was about 19 or 20, I moved to L.A. Specifically, I moved into L.A. by myself. I had a roommate. Um, we moved to L.A. And I moved here specifically because I thought, like, oh, I want to get into animation. I want to get a job. Like, it'll be, I'll be by the jobs. I'll be by the studios. There'll be events. I can go to things. I can network. I can, like, be involved in the, in whatever, like, the industry. You know, I thought I'd come here, and being here would help me grow and evolve and get me a job in the industry. It did not. And it's not because I did anything wrong. It's just that's not how it works. Think about how you are today as an animator. Those of you who are animators or any of you who are artists, probably everybody in here. Do you go outside much? <laughs> Nine out of 10 people in here are going to say, no, I don't go outside. I sit at my computer. I don't go out the sun. No, I, if I need a tan, I just turn up the brightness on my monitor, right? Um, so where are you going to find people? People don't go out, especially in LA where there's traffic and like, you know, loud to stay at home <laughs> um so anyway point just being la is expensive and if you move out here just thinking that it's going to help you get a job it's not a guarantee it's a, it's not a very smart play now if you just want to move out here to be out here that's fine like i'm not saying don't move here i'm just saying don't move here for the wrong reasons or with the wrong expectations that's the thing like don't move here and put yourself in a position to be disappointed and broke save up find a place maybe get some roommates um, visit a couple of times, see if you even like it, and either move out here expecting just to kind of be here and, you know, be around for the stuff that happens, but don't expect that it's going to be this thing of every other week you're going to be at some, like, animation, like, drawing event or something, because it's just not realistic. Um, which you wouldn't know until you've been here and you've gone through what I've gone through to have found that out, that, like, oh, yeah, that was disappointing. Um, but there's nothing wrong with living here. There's nothing wrong with moving here. You just, again, expectations. Set them appropriately. Um, plus, the other thing is, job-wise, if you're in the area, yeah, I can start Monday. But, you know, if you really have a go bag, <laughs> like, be ready. To, like, if you do apply somewhere and they're like, yeah, when can you start? Two weeks? We kind of need you sooner. Do you offer relocation benefits? Yeah, we can help you move. Perfect. That is a thing that some studios will do. They will help you move to get you here. So, you know, they'll pay for it yourself if you can help it. Hopefully that helps. Oh, thank you for the super chat. I'm going to, let's see. Hijabi na hoodie? Did I say that right? Hijabi na hoodie? I hope I said that right. I'm sorry if I if I mispronounced uh, your name. Would it be, um, thank you for the super chat. Would it be unprofessional to create 3D character designs without it being in color? If I can rig and animate it and put it in my portfolio, do you know with, wait, hold on. It's two questions. Would it be unprofessional to create 3D character designs without it being in color? But I can rig and animate it. I can put it in my portfolio. Do you recommend knowing the texture? That is, wouldn't be necessary. Like it would not be unprofessional. If you can create 3D character designs even without texture, that's totally fine. That's awesome. Um, I'm assuming you mean like you're, you'd model it. Totally fine to do that without color. Um, hopefully you can set up the UVs so that someone could do the shading if they wanted to, because that'd be really cool to show that you can make the asset and you can even get it ready for that department. If you know how to texture too, that's a, that's a bonus. Some studios would like you to know, but if you can do the other stuff like that, that's more technical. The, the shading can be taught um, probably more easily. Um, and if you can rig it animated too, that's totally fine. It doesn't have to be in color. If you find someone who is a texture artist who doesn't know how to model or animate, maybe they can do the shading and then you can both have credit on there and you can say, Hey, I did the model, this person did the shading and I did the rigging in the end. You know what I mean? Like, um, that's a good way to do it too. But yeah, totally fine. Totally fine. Do what you're good at. <laughs> I wasn't excited to get attacked in here today. <laughs> Um, is the new workshop the same as the last one? More or less, yeah. I haven't changed much at this point. I, I haven't really changed anything, I don't think, yet. I'm going to add some stuff, but nothing that I know of that's too wild yet. Thanks so much. I felt really bad and I know you had a texture. Totally not an issue. Um, like, unless the studio you, you want to work for is like, oh, do you know how to texture? No, but I can learn. They're like, okay, well, we need you. To, like, they might want you to learn it, but they might also help teach you it. And, um, you know, 
you could watch a couple of videos, get like the rough idea so that you can, you know, if they ask you, oh, do you know how to do shading as well? You can say, well, I have the basics. I understand the basics, but you know, I wasn't, I'm not super confident in my abilities just yet. That's a totally fine and honest answer. They think, okay, sure. We'll train you. Yeah, that's not a big deal. You know, if you're honest about it, and you're just like, yeah, well, I, I understand the basics, but I'm not super confident. Like that's a, that's an acceptable answer. You don't have to know everything. You learn a lot on the job. Unless that particular studio is like, well, we need someone who can texture tomorrow. It's like, okay, well, that's probably not the right fit then. But there's another studio that it might be the right fit. All right. What's the industry level software for 3D motion graphics? Blender or Cinema 4D? Generally, Cinema 4D is the go-to for motion graphics, but Blender is powerful. Uh, Houdini is probably overkill, but also can do the job. Maya can also do a lot of stuff that people don't realize. Cinema 4D is the most common one, but Blender is also a good one. Especially with geometry nodes now, actually. All right. <clears throat> Let's take a look at some Maya stuff. Welcome to Maya. Uh, animation demo things. What should we do? What I have written down from your guys' request, we've got some walk cycle questions, looping animation, um, motion tracking, trails, ghosting, arc tracking stuff, facial expressions, lip sync, pose library, hands, and mash. We have a, we have a lot of topics here. Let me see what I can rapid fire. I actually have some stuff I can open and just show you without having to like animate from scratch. So actually, let's do that for a second. Um, wait, hold on, I gotta check one thing. Okay, one second. I have a quick text I need to send to my wife. All right. Okay. Um, so, let me put this back where I can see it. What am I looking for? I'm looking for... Uh, I'm actually in the wrong project. Let me set my project. Pro tip, set your project. <clears throat> That'll make your life much easier. Examples, mechanics. All right, let's talk about, let's talk about walk cycles and let's talk about looping animation. So uh, here is the Asri rig. Now, this is not a good walk cycle. I'm not about to show you this and be like, here's a great walk. Like, this is a bad walk cycle. I did this for some demo at some point for a, for a student of mine. And they had a question about something. So I did what was needed for that question. I did not, like, finish the walk. So it's also playing. Is it playing at real time? Or did I just animate this really fast? Nope. I knew it. Um, so, yeah. It's not a great walk. But I was showing, I think, how to do the hair or something. I don't remember. Um, but what I wanted to show, in this case, was the uh, graph editor. To talk briefly about looping animation. So if I grab, if I grab all the controls in this character, and we look at the animation, you're going to notice some stuff. First of all, it's a big mess of spaghetti. It's kind of hard to see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to split it into individual channels so that we can see each curve of animation on its own. If you don't know how the heck I'm doing that, you should watch my recent video on graph editor workflows because I cover all this. If you are creating a looping animation, you have to work in the graph editor. There is no way around it. You will be working in the graph editor, which you generally will anyway all the time. In. So that's not really surprising, but the looping stuff is great. Let me show you what happens. If I take, for example, this curve. Or actually, well, let me start at the beginning. You might notice that my, my timeline is from here to here. But you can see that I've got some animation data that's like off to the side and going out of bounds. Like, what's that about? That's actually very common for a lot of my curves here. Some fit in the bounds and some do not. This one doesn't even go more than three keys, right? But I've clearly done some work on it. I've got the tangent split and I've done some weighting and stuff. So these things are intentional. That is on purpose. Now how this works is this. If you animate a loop. Let's take, let's go back to the top and just take this one. If I take this one, 
I select it and I go to uh, curves, you've got pre and post infinity. Now, technically you always have infinity curves on by the, like they, they are always there. So if I go to view and I say, uh, if show infinity, so if I go view infinity, I can actually see them because they're actually active right now. This is a weird looking curve. I think this needs to be adjusted. Also, my graph editor settings are not set properly. Um, so here's the thing. By default, your curves have infinity on. They're just set to um, constant. So every curve by default is like this. You have animation data, and then wherever you don't have animation data, it just lives on the same value that you had it on. But if you want to loop it, you select it, and you go to pre and post, and you say cycle. Now, there are two exceptions to cycle. If it's the body, like the hip controller, or the feet, for example, anything in IK that's in world space, you'll cycle with offset. That way it doesn't just go in space, it'll go and it'll continue, it'll build on itself in space, right? Um, and so, you know, now we've looped it, but that's, you know, that's just like step one. So what I'm going to show you here, let me see if I can show you an example. Um, let me see if I can find a good curve. Where's a good curve example? I got to find one. What I want to show you, let me do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to use this curve as an example. I'm actually going to change it. Mm. Yeah, this one's pretty good. So here's like a leg rotation. I'm going to do this. All right. Let's say you animated this. Oh, hold on. Uh, Alfrey. Thank you again for the super chat. My name is pronounced. I hope I'm, I still hope I'm saying it right, but my name is pronounced. Oh, yeah, you, yes, I see. My name is pronounced Alfrey. But yes, I'm on my way to pronounce. Um, I'm on my way to become an animator. I just need two to three years to finish the project. I have one more question. Did you make a video about the camera settings? Uh, Yeah, I think so. I have two videos that probably talk about the camera. Let me just pull them up really quick so you can see. Um, oops, wrong. Where's it at? videos to talk about the camera i've got um i gotta update some of these videos Yeesh. uh here's one camera animation tips for 3d artists that's one that talks about camera animation and some stuff for cameras there's also there's also the one about play blasting where is it Sorry. Oh, it's this one. Your animation play blast can look like renders. This one here with the share your animation thumbnail. That one as well, I talk about setting up your camera settings for an animated shot. So between those two videos, this one and the actual camera animation video, that's probably good to show most of the camera stuff. I'm also going to write that down as a potential demo topic to talk a little bit about cameras. <clears throat> okay. Hopefully that answers your question. So let's talk about this for a second. Uh, for anyone who's ever going to do a looping animation, I would like to show you what you need to know. <clears throat> and I'll do a video diving more deep into this when I do some game stuff. But well, here's what I want to show you. If I took this curve and I hit auto, you can see that this is, this is what the computer wants to do by default. And when you don't have any looping stuff on, this makes sense. You're like, yeah, cool, that looks great. It looks like it loops perfectly, right? Because you have the key here, and you copy, and you paste it, and it's like, yeah, perfect, there's the curve. Um, so you have that, and that, and they're in the same place, and they match each other. And you're like, yeah, cool, that's looping. The problem is, if you were to actually like set the loop up and turn on the cycle curves, you can see that the curve that gets created doesn't look right. 
it like comes up like this and then it comes in here and then it like lives here for a while and then it moves up right now we're set to just auto interpolation right like auto interpolation is really nothing special it's the computer just automatically generating a spline we did not specify that we wanted to like ease into this key like this because right now it's easing into this key a little bit we could have it ease more you know ease less or not at all right like but this general generic ease is the computer's doing and if you're fine with that that's all right but you have to keep in mind that that's not calculating the uh, the interpolation for the loop that's just calculating itself because if we had a key here and a key here and then like you know after this key which is the same as this key it goes to this one so if i took this and i copied this and i'm going to paste this right here is this where it lives yeah it lives right here if i paste this key to where it belongs on the loop i'm going to break the loop right now like it's going to mess things up you can see now it splits but if i took this key away or actually not even if I took it away look at the difference look at how this is angled now this is the automatic interpolation from this key to this key which is what's happening right because like, it's going from here to here and then which is the same as this and then it's going to this one but if i take this away again see how that that interpolation is changing how that little line is changing direction that flow is important because that's what's going to cause the animation to have a hitch if i leave it like this What's going to happen is the character's going to like jerk. The character's going to jerk every time they hit the loop point. And when you have the entire body doing this, the entire character is going to like it's going to have this hitch every time it plays. It's not going to work. And so what you have to do is you have to consider the fact that like okay, well, this loop exists. And so what what I like to do is I will usually do this. I'll usually say okay, well, I'll paste the one there. And I'll take this, I'll copy it, and I'll paste it. And I'll delete this one and then I'll copy what I had pasted and then I'll put it back over here the reason I do it like that and then let me let me do that one more time so you guys can kind of follow along with me what I'm doing is right now the entire curve is set to automatic which is probably not good and I think I had actually done some work to this curve previously so this is probably not a great idea but just to show you what usually happens with everybody is you're set to auto so what I need to do is I need to have this curve get through this position which is the same as this position and then after that, the loop is going to happen, which is going to take us from this position to this position. Now, I want this keyframe to have a better calculation. Right now, it's just flat because it doesn't have anything next to it. Like, it doesn't exist over here. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to put it where it would be here, which is going to cause this thing to turn. See how it's now angled, right? Versus the original, it was flat. So I'm going to copy this angled one, and I'm going to put it here because I need it, I need these to match. I'm going to copy this, I'm going to paste it here. Now, this one has the left and the right, which is exactly what I need. Now, if I come back to this one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete this now because I've broken my loop. You can see my loop is like broken now. It's got this little weird little kink in it. So if I delete this, what's going to happen is it's going to recalculate this guy and it's going to change the interpolation of this key, making it wrong again. Watch. Delete this. Watch this one. See how it changed it ever so slightly? We don't want that. So we've broken it again, but luckily we pasted it over here and this one's not being affected. So I can copy the one that's correct and I can paste it back and that fixes it. Now this curve is properly set to loop. It will now flow perfectly through itself and calculate its own keyframes. Now, if I make any changes, uh, I'm going to have to redo that. But what I can do if I need to move these, I can move these together. Now, if I need to rotate them or something, I'm going to need to rotate them and then I'm going to need to copy it and paste it over here. Like I'm going to need to make, you know, keep in mind that those are supposed to be linked. Keep that in mind for the workflow. But in theory, you know, this, this would work. Now, you'll notice there are a few, last thing I'll say on this, there are a few curves floating around. Where's a good example? There are a few curves like this one where the animation is actually like outside the bounds. What I had done is I had, I had done whatever animation I did and then, you know, maybe I had my timeline expanded and I was working like this. Or maybe, um, or maybe I just did some work and then I offset it. I'm not really sure. I don't remember. It doesn't really matter. Point is, the animation it lives outside. So it's a little bit harder to work with. Now, I could, you know, basically just do the same thing. Like, I could just kind of frame up on this area and do the same process. And if that were the case, you could see that this actually doesn't work. You can see it's broken. 
I actually can look. Both are flat. They're not supposed to be flat. This is probably supposed to be more like that. And I can just copy it and I can just paste it over here and just see what happens. Like that's better. That's already better. So I could just skip all the steps of making it exactly perfect. And I could just make it something and paste it in. Like that's also an option. That's another trick for you. Um, it's a little bit less precise, but we don't need precision. I should be in charge, not the computer. I can actually see above that this one has the same problem. Because look at this. Why is this leveling out here? Only because it's in the middle. So when I told you this was an incomplete walk cycle, this is a big reason why it's incomplete. I hadn't, you know, fixed my loops. And there's other problems as well. But look, even here, same thing. Now, here's a little funny trick. Let me show you something different. What I could do is I could copy these guys. And let's say I like, let's say I have this curve and it lives halfway outside. I'm like, I don't like that. I want it to be within this range. I want all my keyframes here. What I could do is I could just copy this group, come here and paste it and then delete everything outside the loop. I've taken the exact same animation. Oops. Oh, now I've made it all hard to see. Hang on. I've taken the exact same animation which I was going to show you here. You can see the curve profile. Copy, paste, delete these ones. I've just moved the keys to live inside the bounds. Exact same animation. And now I can do, you know, my, it may or may not be easier to adjust in this position. Like, what, like what's this one doing? This is, a, this is her pinky. This is the Asri control for her right pinky second joint. That's the thing I'm messing with. Why is this bent like this? I don't know. Let's fix it. Uh, overall, this curve is probably very wrong in, in general. But anyway, those are three different ways to think about looping animation. What you need to make sure you do is turn on the infinity and then consider the, the exterior keys and know that Maya by default or whatever software is probably going to just point them flat, which is not generally conducive to a good loop. It just means it's easing into this pose, which might work if it's like moving back down, but even so, like it probably still needs a little bit of love to make it a more interesting or more accurate curve. So there you go. There's a quick demo on some looping stuff. And if there's any people who work in games here, you can, you know, tell me if I've missed anything or if it's like, actually, I have a better workflow because I don't work in games. So I'm sure there are better ways to do it. But that's that's my that's my method. I also like this view because you can easily kind of scroll through and look and be like, OK, what do I have problems with? Like, ah, this one's a problem, right? Versus this. This is harder to troubleshoot. Um, is there any way in Maya to minimize the setup so it can feel less overwhelming? Yeah, totally. Um, I'm not going to do this right now because I don't want to have to rebuild it, but you can, you can like undock most of these panels. Actually, I can show you this. If I take like this, for example, whoop, you can take this shelf, you can take it, you could delete it if you don't need it. Like you can, you can disable a lot of the interface. I show that in my workshop actually, which I think... I think I did a little bit of that, but you can take stuff off and you adjust it and then you can save it as a workspace. So you can always return to it. Um, there's also some settings in the animation preferences in like the UI section to be able to do that as well. Certain things that are hard to undock, you can actually just disable them that way. Is that a simple copy paste? Yes. Uh, pro tip here. This is important. I'm going full screen, so you know I'm serious. <laughs> now that Jen pointed it out. Um, copy pasting in Maya. There's a rule you need to know, and I should make a video on this, but I think I do have it in the video. You need to know this. If you're copy pasting something, anything in Maya, there are a few things to know. It's kind of quirky, and there's some ways to do it right. But what you just flat out don't want to do, if you're copy pasting data, in one area of Maya, for example, the graph editor. If I was like, okay, I want to take this, I want to angle it like this, and I want to copy paste it over to this other, this other thing right there. I can grab it, I can copy it, and I can fly over here and just, you know, grab it, hit paste. That's fine, no issues. The problem would be, and this is this is part of the reason that I keep my windows really big, and I have this thing docked in here. The graph editor, you'll notice, is docked in my window, right? Like I can collapse it and pull it out. It's actually very convenient for me. I don't like windows floating. I don't like them undocked and floating around. 
it is more it is much easier so watch if i just pull up uh, oh pull up a thing a floating window i hate it because it's more likely that you might select something and then move your mouse outside the bounds of the window don't do that do not put your mouse outside of a window that you're working in because here's the thing if i took any data i'm not going to do it because it'll mess stuff up if i copied this keyframe or copied this curve or copied anything if i copy this or copy this value from over here if i copy anything and then i move my mouse over to the viewport and then i hit paste you know maybe even like okay let me select this this is selected move my mouse and hit paste it will paste that data that it's holding on to it'll try to paste it into my viewport and because that's not actually like you can't do that you can't paste of that like not compatible that's one of the quickest ways to either what might ha depending on what you're doing it might paste another copy of your rig and not the full character with the rig just like the, the skeleton like it might paste a full skeleton back into your scene or something it might it might paste like math data somewhere into maya's like, like it can on the good side just paste in really weird stuff and break your undo queue so you can't undo it and you're like crap like i gotta find a way to delete what i did what can be really bad it can corrupt your file just like that now it doesn't usually happen like that but it has happened to me in the past um so yes what dan just said save often save separate working files you want to increment your saves meaning you don't just hit file save you don't just want to do save scene as that's the whole process Increment and save is your friend. Every time you save, increment it. That way you have save one, save two, save three, save four, save five. And what it'll do is it, you can set a preference in that to have like, okay, only keep 10. Like I don't need more, you know, or just keep them all up to you. But that way, if you corrupt your file, you can go back to the last version. Like, oh, I lost 30 minutes of work. I got to go back to version 27. That's much better than you've been saving, saving, saving over the file. Then you do that. Something so simple and easy. I'm going to copy paste. Oh no, I just corrupted my file. And that's the same file you've been using for everything and you have no backup. Another reason why Dropbox or Google Drive is so important. If you're using Dropbox and it's syncing your file, I've had that happen. When I was in school, I was using Dropbox and I had it in a folder that was being synced to Google or synced to Dropbox or whatever. And so every time I would save, it would save that as the version history to Dropbox's cloud server. So I've corrupted my file. Oh no, what have I done? Out of habit, saved and closed. Or like closed and yes, I want to save it. I was like, oh, I just saved my corrupted file over. Like I have no backup. What the heck? Like, oh, let me go to Dropbox. And it had already uploaded to Dropbox. I was like, I just corrupted my Dropbox file. But I didn't because Dropbox has version history. So I was able to go into Dropbox, go to the file and say, oh no, this is version 28. And I rolled it down and said, revert it to 27. It undid the last one. I was able to re-download version 27, make my change, and save it as a new 28, and move on from there. Set that stuff up. Like, don't sleep on that. <laughs> Please. Ugh, you'll be so miserable if you forget. I lost weight? Looking good? Why, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Uh, eating healthier, you know, it does wonders. Let's see, let's see, let's see. My teacher has us paste three cycles in a row and use middle one, which she says should be good. But somehow this was wrong. Paste three cycles in a row. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. You like take the whole thing and then paste, 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 and then use the middle one as the loop. I see. I mean, technically that like kind of works, but that's just a very, it's like a brute force way of doing it. Like it works, but it's not a very clean workflow and it doesn't leave you much room for flexibility. You'd have to go back and like delete all the external stuff anyway. And like, st you'd still have to do this. Like that could work in a pinch, but I wouldn't recommend it as a, as a common workflow. Set up the autosave. Yeah, it's also a good idea. Animbot has a whole auto recovery anim uh what am I saying? Animbot has an in oh Animbot's not loaded. Weird. Let me see if I have it like floating around here. Um Where is Animbot? I forget the code for it.
I don't remember the, the code for it. That's okay. Um, not easy right now. Anabot has a whole re animation recovery tool. It's really, really powerful. It's really great. Would you recommend doing temporal increment saves or do it manually every once in a while? Uh, most people do both. I do manual just because I do so many demos and like mentor meetings and stuff. Like I'm const like I'm in Maya right now working on this file, right? For you guys. And I might do something to say, let me show you what you shouldn't do. Da -da -da, and I might delete stuff. I don't want it to auto save over my file because I do all these demos. But in general, it's probably a good idea to have it save like every 30 minutes to an hour. Just so, just in case. Um, but yeah, at the very least, set up one of the two. You can also just use Anabot Tangent. Yeah, Anabot Tangent will do, it, it'll calculate stuff for, for looping and stuff as well. That is a very helpful thing. But it is good to know how to do it on your own. Now, working games is pretty much the workflow. A validated. <laughs> I've never checked with anybody, so cool. I'm glad to know that I'm not lying to everyone. All right, let's uh, let's let's not save this file. The gasp. Let's talk about. Let's see. Someone asked about motion tracking and ghosting and stuff. Let me do that because that's a pretty quick one. I can do that really easily. Um, If I do, let's do the front view. Let's do an orthographic camera. And let's just set up, you know, what would normally be our basic bouncing ball setup. All right, we got our ball. Actually, you guys want to see something cool? I'm going to show you something that I don't show to people. I'm going to import. Actually, I'm going to do it in the, over here. I'm going to import something for you. Show you a little sneak peek or something. So, uh, some of you might know this. Anyone who is in my Patreon community or... Um, no, I think it's mostly... Pa I may have shared it on... It's mostly Patreon. I don't know who else would know this. Maybe some people. I don't know. Depends. I share some stuff every now and then. But if you are part of my Patreon community, you probably know this. If not, you may have heard me talk about it, but I don't think you've ever seen it. Uh, a couple of years ago... I started the process of getting some rigs made for you guys. I wanted to have some some beginner level. Basically, I wanted to have some rigs made so that when I recommended like, oh, yeah, you should do this assignment, you'd have stuff to use. And it's been a while. And the rigs are like, OK, well, let's see. I'm, I'm, distracted as I work on this. Um, I was getting some rigs made for you guys that are going to be free and available for everybody. Basically what happened, long story short, all the stuff I'm going to, all the stuff I'm going to share right now is that um, I was supposed to get four rigs made and I kind of got like two almost made. They're not finished. They have some bugs and some issues that I don't like, but it is what it is. I've got two kind of there. And then two that I just, they're not worth showing you. Um, but people in my mentorship use these. This is, I've, I've let people in the mentorship use these for about, that are part of a year and a half now, maybe two years. And so I'm going to use those to do this little demo because there's some cool stuff. They, at first, you're like, oh, it's a ball and a pendulum. Why do, why would we care? These do a lot more than you think. Uh, there's a reason that I designed rigs for these. But, um... Even if you're like, well, I'm an advanced animator. I work in the industry. Like, I don't need a ball and a pendulum. No matter what he shows me, I'm not going to be impressed. I bet you're wrong. Um, there's a couple people here like, I know why we care. <laughs> uh, for this quick little demo, though. Well, let me just do this. Actually, this is let me just make this really easy on myself. Let me show you one thing, and then I'll show you something else. If I take this little ball, and I just move it over here, and let me go like that. Whee! Right? If you are trying to... Um, if you're trying to do some arc tracking, two quick tips I can show you. You can grab any asset, any geometry or whatever, you can go to the animation tab and you can click this little button. You can also go to the animation menu set and I think it's under 
Well, look, Animot's back. That was weird. Get in there. Um. Oh, let me move these keyframes to where you can see them. There you go. Mew, mew, mew. All right. Sorry, I didn't realize I was blocking the screen. Um. If I take this guy and I go to visualize, there's editable motion trail. That's the same as this button here. So um, if I just grab this and I click that, this is the default Maya motion trail. And you can see it, it shows the path that it takes. And you can, if you look closely, you can see that it's red in the past and blue in the future. Quick thing, this is an asset. This is an object in the scene. You can select it. You can go to your uh, attribute editor and you can make changes. So for example, trail thickness, much easier to see now. There's an X-ray option, whether or not you want it to cover your thing. Um, you can have it only draw when selected. So if I click away and then click the asset, you can see that it only shows up when I click on the object. So some good stuff for you to know. So again, I'll select the object, bring it up, and I'll select the motion trail itself. Um, and then something else I like to do is I don't like past and future draw mode, I like alternating frames. That way you can actually see the spacing between frames. Um, you can also change how many frames. That way, you know, in case it's a problem, if you have a really long shot. And you can change the colors. Blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of other, other stuff you can do here. You can have the, the keyframe size. You can color them with uh, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, what I like to do, and, and then by the way, you can adjust, you can grab the little handles and you can move, move this and it will adjust the animation of the ball, right? So you can do that. And if I mess with the graph editor even, I can, if we watch closely here at the colors, um, expand this out expand this out do that do that there make a little bit more ball bouncy so you can see that the uh, like this one's really tall and then they get shorter and that's showing you the spacing that's showing you the um, that it launches up really quickly over one frame, and then by the end, it's going up really small increments. So it goes. Right. So uh, that's one way. That's your motion chip. Now, you also have that inside of uh, Anabot. Anabot is actually better. It's faster. It's more reliable. I haven't, I haven't updated some stuff, apparently. So the, here's the Anabot one. And you can actually see it's, it's very similar. Um, now, off the top of my head, I have to remember how you adjust it. If you right-click it, you can adjust different things. So, let's see. They actually have a lot of different things you can do. Dash, dots, thick, spacing, and temperature, and various things. You can actually change a lot of stuff. Um, just various things. I don't usually use this tool, like this tool in general. I do it to show people, but I haven't used it a lot lately. Um, but there's even a gimbal lock temperature, so it will warn you if you have, like, a rotation or something. Like, if you're tracking a wrist, and you're tracking the wrist moving through space or something, you can actually turn it on gimbal lock temperature, and it'll show you where it's gimbal locking. And that might be part of the problem that you might be having in that moment. Um, anyway, and there's various other things in here, and faster update, faster interaction, da 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 Offset, you can offset it. You can actually offset this curve to like the edge. So if you're, if it's blocking stuff, you can actually have it now trail along kind of the back left. You know what I mean? Like if it's, if it's an issue and you don't want it in the middle. Anyway, stuff like that, very handy. So that's the motion trail. And then there's also one other thing I wanna show you, which is ghosting. If I click on this button here, it will actually turn on ghosting, which is same idea, just different execution. And so that's this little uh, dots. You can also go to visualize. In the animation menu set, you gotta visualize and go to uh, the ghosting editor. And you can see, you can you can specify, like, are you allowed to ghost meshes, joints, locators? Um, you can ghost a bunch of different objects. You can unghost certain things. You can unghost everything. 
Um, but it, this one is not an asset. This isn't something that you create. So if you want to get rid of the motion trail, I forgot to say this, if you want to get rid of the motion trail, you select it, you delete it. If you want to get rid of a ghost, you just have to unghost it. There's a button for it. You can create your ghost. You can change all your settings. You can set it just to do the back frames or the front frames. You can also set it to do all, or you could set it to only do um, specific frames. Like if you just, if you want to hold, like if you're like, I want frame one and frame, well, I'll just do frame one first. Oops. Okay, well, I just hit, oh, there we go. So if we go frame one, and then the current frame, and then maybe I want the current frame. So you can actually lock specific poses into space. And what's cool about this is it's 3D, right? So if you were posing your character, you can actually pose your character, lock those poses, and then that way when you're you're posing your next breakdowns and stuff, you can actually see where your arcs are going to be. So that's all very handy. You can also just um, ghost keyframes only. So you can see anywhere that it's keyed, it's going to have uh, ghosts. That's a ghosting editor. Ta-da. Is there ghosting with Anabot? No. Um, this is a Maya feature. You don't need Anabot for that. <laughs> Thank you for being born. <laughs> well, you're welcome. Would you prefer this over JT Ghost? JT Ghost. Uh, I remember BH Ghost, the plugin. Let me look that one up. I used to really like BH Ghost, but I don't know if it's still around. JT Ghost. Maya. Uh, I'm having a hard time finding it. JT Ghost. I'm not finding that. Hang on. Let me force the search. Oh, I see. Uh, Both seem fine. Same deal. Basically the same thing. I think it's using the same technology anyway. Um, let's see, let's see. Oh, BH Ghost is still around? Does it still, BH Ghost works in like 2022, 2023 with an updated Python? I love BH Ghost. I like that one a lot. BH Ghost is cool. BH Ghost is one that kind of just like an outline around your characters. I like that one a lot. What if you want to ghost the head of a rig to fix the spacing? Yeah, you could do that too. Um, in, in Maya, if I'm not mistaken, I believe, let me double check this. I think you can grab specific faces and ghost those faces. Oh, no, no. You can't do components anymore. Maybe not. Um... What you could do if you want to be, if you want to be, uh, if you really only wanted certain pieces and you wanted to force it, what you could do <laughs> is you could grab that stuff and duplicate it. Like you could duplicate the mesh at the moment and it'll just pull out a copy of the, the asset and then you could just delete everything below the head. Like this is probably not a, like a great method. It's going to slow down your scene, but if you just duplicate stuff, like it's messy. But in theory, like, it could work. That's how you do smears and stuff is one option. There's a whole video on that. Eh, I mean... There's probably other ways to do it. <laughs> I'm using... Okay, BH Ghost does work in 23. Great. Okay, then I need to just re-download it. I love BH Ghost. Whenever I import my video reference in Maya, my viewport starts to lag. What should I do? A um, couple things. There are some animators who will tell you not to do that in general, that you should have your reference separate just for your own process to like look at it, figure it out, and then put it in without staring in one for one. But there's lots of workflows that do use it. So I'm not saying you shouldn't. I, I do it all the time. Um, but I would recommend you're probably using a video file, I would assume. If you're using a video file as your video reference, like an MOV or something, 
um, what you should do is you should convert your video to image sequence so that you have like a folder of um, oh, I know the answer to this but I'm forgetting now JPEGs or PNGs one of them is faster than the other I always thought it was JPEGs I think it might actually be I can't remember I always do JPEGs, but I might have learned that PNGs are slightly faster. I cannot remember. I am not sure. Somebody told me definitively which one is faster, and I do not remember. I always do JPEGs, though. I just think it's easier. Hi, hey, Christelle. Um, yeah, I think Kimmy's right. That's what I'm thinking, too. Like, PNG has more color information. It's, it's less compressed, and you have the possibility for alpha channels. Pretty sure. So if you just have normal video reference... Convert it from an MOV, convert it to a JPEG image sequence, and then load it in as that. And then what you need to do is just play through it once. It will then cache it into RAM, and then it's good. It's fast. It won't give you any problems. Um, if you wanted to have an image plane, reference plane or whatever, that actually has transparency, technically you could use the PNG to do it, and you might have to connect some stuff in the hypershade, but you can do some interesting stuff there. I showed that in my workshop. Um, but yeah. Can you use ghosting for smears? No, because ghosting isn't a real object. It won't be rendered. Um, is ghosting good to animate fast movements or sword swings? No, same reason. I have a video on smears and dupes that you guys can check out. Uh, right here. How to animate speed, smears and dupes. So I show a couple of different workflows to do those kinds of things. Sorry, just finished AN01 an Animation Mentor. Your channel was a big contribution to how I found them. Thanks for that. Glad to help. Congratulations. Um, your most anticipated games for 2023. Starfield, Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. I always want to call it Breath of the Wild 2, but Tears of the Kingdom. And I don't know what else is coming out. Those are my two. <laughs> Is it hard to animate dragons? Yes. So ready to come to Spain. Spain is different. Funny, cool, great. Fiesta, Sahela, Gaspacho, Domenico, Amon, Cite Oliva, Sotia. I have been to Spain. I have been to Spain not for a very long time. I went. Where did I go? It was on a trip. Uh, we did a trip a couple years ago in 2018, I think. We went to Iceland, London, Malta, and Ibiza. So that's how I was in Spain for a little bit. Um, I was there in the off season, so it wasn't particularly exciting, but it was really pretty. Really enjoyed being there. Would like to go back and actually do some stuff. <laughs> yeah, see, uh, if, all of you who live in other countries, here's what we should do. Talk to your universities or your, you know, some some group that does educational stuff, and uh, show my channel. Convince them that that I should come and teach things and show stuff to to the group, and uh, convince them to pay for the flights and the hotels and the food and that stuff. And I'm in. Yeah, we'll make it happen. And I say that not really joking. <laughs> I have done that before. Uh, I got to go to Taiwan in like 2019 for like three weeks and I taught like a whole week long animation thing. And then I went and toured around and they paid me for all of it. And it was very nice. And so, you know, you should you should help me out. I, I'd love to come to your, your country. <laughs> I'm just not gonna pay for it. <laughs> Let's see. Is there a way to copy paste flipped pose in Maya just like in Blender? Yeah. Uh, Animbot makes that really easy. There's a one click button for it down here. It's called the mirror button. Um, in Maya, there are a couple ways you could do it. I don't know a one click thing. Aside from that, like Animbot's the way to do it. <clears throat> All right. Let's do so quick refresher on the stuff that I've been sharing for those who are new, because I know that people on live streams kind of come and go. So a couple things just to throw out real quick. Make sure everyone knows what's going on. <clears throat> Three things. Number one. Oh, yeah. Then I have a really cool thing to show you. 
Um, three things. Number one, I'm working on a video right now that's more or less like uh, what I wish I knew, things I wish I'd learned earlier, da 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 things I wish I knew sooner when I was starting animation or as a student and so on. I have a list of topics that I'm going to be covering. If you have any questions that you want included in there that you're like, oh, I wonder if you'll talk about this, put them in the comments, put them in the, in the chat, uh, let me know so I can, I'm sourcing questions from you guys so I can include them in the video. Um, and that'll probably come out next Tuesday is the plan. But yeah, if you want to have your questions in there. So that's, that's kind of the reason I put this live stream together is I needed questions and I didn't really know how else to get questions from people. So oh, let's do a live, let's do a live thing. So uh, that is thing number one. Thing number two is that if you are looking to learn Maya or like expand your knowledge of Maya, I have a workshop. We did it over the summer. We're going to do it again in like February-ish, something like that. I'm not really sure. Um, but there's a link in the description, top link, and it'll take you to the page where I'm like... It, if you're curious about it, go to the link and it'll show you like what we covered last time. I have a little bit of a page that's kind of an overview of what we did last time. And it's all recorded. It's all super helpful. And um, you can basically just sign the little... You can fill the little form out. It's like, hey, I want to know about this. And I'll send you an email when I actually launch it. I promise not to spam you. I hate spam. Uh, last thing was... What was the last thing I was going to tell you? Uh, <laughs> uh, a panic. What was it going to be? Let's see. Workshop, video, and... Something else. It'll come back to me. For now, let's do some demos, right? Let's see. I'm not very knowledgeable in rigging characters. Is lattice deformation okay for simple spherical characters? I usually use a lattice with cluster controllers. Um, in character rigging, you don't want to use a lattice. It's not particularly high tech enough to be fat. Like it's pretty slow. Lattices are pretty heavy and they're not compatible with things like Unreal and stuff like that. So they don't export well. Lattices are fine as like a polish, like, oh, I want to do this thing to my, I want to deform my character for my demo reel shot. Like, sure. But like, it's not good in the pipeline. So no, it's not good in the rig. Um, do you know good and free reference libraries? YouTube. Honestly, just YouTube. Show ZooTools features. I love ZooTools. Do I have ZooTools installed? I do. Uh, I'll try to open it. I haven't, I haven't touched it in a while. Okay, yeah, it still works. Uh, I haven't really dug into ZooTools that much, so I actually can't really show that much because I don't know what half the stuff even is. Um, let me see. What do I have that I can show? I don't know. There's a bunch of good stuff in here. I just don't... I never mess with it. Um, ZooTools has a bunch of cool assets and stuff. Also, my screen has like a display bug, so sorry for the flickering. Uh, yeah, you can have all these models and stuff. You can bring them in and do stuff. There's also like lighting setups, which I can't, I can't handle the flickering. I don't want to give anybody <clears throat> like f flickering strobe warnings or anything. So, um, so give me one second. I got to check this text message. One second. We are we are hosting family for the holidays. So we have a lot of cleaning and, and work we're doing at home. Right now my wife is at home working on those things and she needs some assistance. So I will be showing my last couple of demos and then I'm gonna go be useful. Um any thoughts on skipping a term at AM before Anno 5 and going to NMC for Michael's later, later class? Hmm. Thoughts on skipping a term at Animation Mentor before Anno 5 and going to NMC for the later class? Um. I don't know if that's a great time to skip stuff and go over there. Let me put it this way. You can totally do it 
and you'll learn a lot. But if you wait and actually finish out through class six and then go over, you'll learn even more because you'll be more ready to receive a lot of the information he's gonna share. He's gonna show you a lot of stuff that you will not have really touched yet. And so you'll be like, wow, I'm learning so much, but your brain's not actually quite, you're not, you're not primed for it yet, in my opinion. So if you still have ANO five and six to do, I would do those first and then I would take the layered class. He'll be teaching it again. Um, you could take it twice if you have the budget for it. Like you could take it now and then do eight and five and six and then do it. Like that would also be great, but that's just more expensive. But if you had to only take it once, I would probably wait until after six. Uh, where can I send demos if I animate lots of dragons? I don't know. Just put on your demo reel and apply where you want to apply. It doesn't really change anything. Is there a skill level required? I think that was a question about my workshop. There's not. Uh, it's uh, it's it it goes from basic to advanced. It covers a lot of stuff. If it's if anything goes over your head, that's why you have the recording. Um, how do people joining new studios avoid this overwhelming left? Wait, what? How do people joining new studios avoid the overwhelming overwhelming accept it attitude and just create good content? I think the directors are very often pushing the mindset. Mindset of accept it? I don't get it. I don't understand your question. Accept it attitude. I don't understand the question. Um, so, bro, just stopping by real quick. Wanted to say that you really got me in animation. Your videos are great. Really moving. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for popping in. Hope all is well. Um, do you ever use blend shapes to shape the character shots? Uh, yeah, sometimes I'll use blend shapes to kind of push a pose or something. You guys want to see something cool? Let me show you some cool things. So these don't look particularly exciting. It's a ball on a pendulum. We've seen these before and, you know, they, they're not generally very special, but these ones are. So let me show you a couple things. So these are mine. I had these designed, like I designed these, I had these made. They're not 100% finished, but they're not being worked on anymore. So they are, they're effectively done, but they still have some bugs and quirks to them. And maybe at some point I'll get them fixed, but whatever. You got your main layout control. You don't animate the ball with this. You place it where it's gonna go. You point to the direction it's gonna move and you can scale it. Nothing too crazy. Then you have your actual mover. Boom, 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 boom. Right? Pretty straightforward so far. You can rotate it, but you probably don't want to. You have your squash and stretch. So squash from there, or maybe it hits the, uh, grab this guy. Maybe it hits the ceiling. It squishes up there. Um, now, in the little settings cog, we got a few other things. If I turn off the main control, I can turn off the squash and stretch. I love just the ball. We have the standard. We have the basketball. We have the soccer ball. You can basically switch this into a bunch of different things. And it is actually changing the geometry, which is pretty cool. It is changing the mesh. See the golf ball is a little bit heavy. And so if you have a slower computer, you're like, well, that's a lot of geometry. I don't want to deal with that. You can actually turn the smoothing off and it'll, it'll speed things up a little bit. I'll leave it on. More fun. So if I go to the baseball, this is actually geometry. So, um, so there's that. Now, if I turn back on the main control and the stretch control, one thing that happens is people like to have the ball roll. Pretty straightforward. Now, you don't actually use this. Here's something that some rigs get wrong. Right, it's coming in. It's coming in really, really fast. And it's also spinning. Okay, well, that's a problem. We don't want this, which is why in the settings cog, we've got a roll control. It allows you to roll the ball while keeping the shape. So it'll roll within its squash shape. Um, so there's that. So that's actually what you would use to roll it. Um, turn that off. So you've got that. We've got the... Um, let me go back to standard. We've got the secondary controls, which are used to help kind of sculpt it. I like to use it for weight. 
so you can actually have it feel like the ball is, you know, maybe maybe the ball is kind of squashing down, and you want to make it feel not just like it's, you know, stretched the ball, but you actually want it to feel like it's it's squashing into the floor. Um, so you can use that. Or you can have the baseball thing again, and you say it's getting whacked. Clang! Super cartoony, right? Um, so you got some fun stuff there. And you can do some interesting shaping and stuff. So there's the secondary controls. Those are a little bit more advanced. And then the tertiary controls, which most people won't need, but they're there if you do need them. Where you can really get in there and adjust this thing. And you can make a little beanbag chair or something. So if you want to go crazy, you can. Um, he also has eyes. Because he's cute and fun like that. Um, watching videos with Maya, it looks so much simpler than Blender. I feel like Blender's more of a Windows PC, Mac is an Apple product. Maya's an Apple... You think Maya's the Apple product? That's very interesting you say that. I've never heard that take before. I... I don't feel that way, but I've just been in Maya for so long that maybe I don't see what you're seeing. Maya just looks so much cleaner. Interesting. I've never heard that before. <laughs> Maya is not generally considered a very clean or intuitive pro program, but if, hey, if you're, if you're liking it, that's great. Maya... I also feel like Maya is kind of a mess, but um, no, that's good. Maya is a very powerful tool, does a lot of good stuff, and it does it well. There's some stuff it doesn't do as well, but there's some stuff it does very well, which is true of all software, right? Like everything has what it's good at. So, you know, for certain things, Maya is a great tool. It is interesting, though, that you say that. I've never heard that take before. I'm super curious what it is that you've seen that makes you... I'm I'm I would I'm I'm intrigued to learn more because that's a really cool take that I've never heard anyone share before. Um. <laughs> I'm kind of glad I started with Maya because Maya. Back in 2012, the first version I ever downloaded, Maya 2012 was the first version I got on my computer, and it was so overwhelming, and terrifying, and I learned it. Right? So now no software looks that complicated to me. When I opened Houdini for the first time, I was like, oh, nodes, those are new. But aside from that, I was like, yeah. Like, it's new, it's different, I don't understand it, but, you know, if you learn something kind of crazy and heavy, then the rest of it's, like, not too bad. So, glad I went the way I went. <laughs> uh, okay, so this little guy's got eyes. Those eyes can obviously move around as he can look around his environment. And the, he will, by default, those eyes will follow the different... So if you took the tertiary controls... I, I guess I could, just, I could just turn them on. If I turn this on and stretch him, his eyes will come along for the ride. So you can do some fun smearing stuff. So if you roll him or whatever, like he'll come and do that too. Or you can tell it, like, okay, don't follow the deformation. You can turn it on, you can turn it off. Roll and deformation. Sorry about the siren, if you can hear it. Um... So you've got the look around controls and then you've got uh, this little guy is for asymmetry. And then you've got these guys, which are um, individual eye controls. So if you need to have one of them like drift off, you can. Um, you can specifically move them if you need to do something specific with them. You can scale them and do whatever you need to do. But these little arrows here cover the Squash and stretch of his eyes. Wow, that's crazy! Oh my gosh! Uh, and you also have built in here. Um, you also have deform controls, which I don't recommend using. Instead, there's some blend shapes for you to take advantage of. For like happy, or his blinking, sad, angry, unamused, smiling, smiling eyes, just because they're pointing down. I think. And, uh, dizzy. Um, they don't work well to combine. They break. But one at a time. They work fine. So that's his little face. Last, uh, there's some offset stuff, which is good for people who know what that's needed for. Aside from that, that's a ball bounce rig. So that's that. Let's get to the good one. This is the one I want to show you. It's got the cool stuff. This is an interesting take. I'm going to read this comment because I want to talk about it. 
Uh, Charles says, <clears throat> Maya is an industry standard, so you don't have a choice. Learn Blender on your free time and prepare for the, prepare for the future. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it is you're aiming for. I'm assuming you mean that Maya is the industry standard, so learn it because you need it, and then Blender is a free time thing. But I would say that Maya is a great tool. If you want to learn character animation, it's the way to go. Blender is a great tool for a bunch of other stuff. Learn it because it is also a standard for a lot of stuff, just not animation at the moment. Um, but you've also got things like Unreal, which people don't realize is also a competitor for industry standard animation tool. Right now, Maya is still king, and for the next couple of years, it will be. But by 2025, we're going to have to consider Maya, Blender, and Unreal Engine as the three potentials for animation. And I'll have lots of videos to talk about why I believe that and to show you tutorials to get us all up to speed on all three tools. But in 2025, you won't have to just go with Maya for animation if you don't want to. You should, in theory, be able to choose from those three to do a lot of stuff for animation. This video, yes, this video will continue to live on. Uh, it'll be here to watch later. I don't think Unreal is a competitor just yet for animation. I agree. It's not just yet, but it will be. It will undoubtedly be in the next couple of years. Uh, they, I have, I'll be talking about it in other videos, so I won't take too much time now. But yes, Unreal is going to be a major player in animation. And anyone who disagrees just isn't paying attention. And that's okay. It'll come soon enough. Uh, okay. Pendulum Rig. Yay, everybody's favorite. The only one you love more is the ball with the tail. Um, yeah, Pendulum Rig is a very common rig. Everyone's kind of gone through this assignment before where you do the thing, right? Nothing too crazy here. Uh, as far as what to do, same deal. You got the platform, you got the rope. You got the main controls, and you got the secondary controls. The secondary controls are kind of fun. You can adjust things like this. You can scale it, which if I can aim, you can scale it up. You can do some fun little squashy, stretchy, like, rotatey stuff. Like, you can do some fun stuff here. But you've also got these secondary controls in here that are basically like IK handles that don't really seem to do a whole lot. So you wouldn't use those like that. We'll come back to those. He's also got the same eyes. Same deal. Um... You can also switch it to an FK body. So instead of moving it from the top, you can also have it rotate from the bottom. So if you wanted to have, this is more of like a platform that characters are jumping on top of, you can actually reverse it, which is kind of cool. Um, you can also reverse the head if for some reason you need it to be upside down. Now here's where it gets exciting. Move this over here. Here are the features that I was most excited about. You can change the length of the chain down to 10 segments. I don't recommend this for beginners, but if you really needed to, there you go. You could do something really interesting. Now, that's not there just to make your life hell when it comes to pendulum animation. Uh, there is... There is a reason for this. I did not want to make a pendulum rig that was a throwaway rig. Most of us here who have done the pendulum assignment... We did it the times we were required to do it, and then we never touched that rig again, because why else would you really need it? So I wanted to make a version of this rig that you could actually use for advanced shots. As you grow as an artist, the rig grows with you. Literally. But um Sorry, wrong button at first. Um, but uh, the thing is, you can actually update this to this. You can actually use this to do a lot of cool stuff. Are these rigs part of the animation workshop you're teaching? Uh, sort of. These rigs eventually will be available to everybody, but yes, everybody who joins the workshop will get access to these rigs. So if you want these, that's the quickest way to get it. Uh, people in my mentorship get it, and people in the workshops get it. So yes. Um, and if you're interested in the workshop, there's a link below. You can look into it. I haven't announced the actual dates or anything yet, so if you're interested, it's just sort of a interest form. But here's the cool stuff. Here's where it gets good. You can actually change the prop at the bottom from a ball to a box, which again, we, we can we can scale and adjust and mess with. Um, you can turn it into, oops, you can turn it into an arrow thingy. You can turn it into a ball with spikes, which is a good time to mention that you can also, let me do this. 
if I take this guy and I rotate this, you see how this is like one, two, three joints? This is good for beginners. This is what you want when you're just starting out because you want to be able to deal with segments. Once you have figured out how to do all the animation of this, we can switch the rope to a curved rope and it'll actually do a smooth interpolation. So you don't have the segments anymore. We can also switch that to uh, an actual physical rope or my favorite, the chain. Check that out. What's cool about that, aside from just being cool, is that if you combine that with the fact that we can adjust the length of the chain, we start to see some interesting possibilities. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you is if you remember the secondary control, that little IK control that when I went like this and it broke things, that's actually designed to be used with with the interpolated ones. And the reason that these exist, oops, wrong one. The reason that exists is this. If I take the, let me make this longer. If I take the normal ones, it's an FK chain. I move it over and it pulls the whole chain and everything down below it. But if I take the IK one in, inside, it just takes that little piece. And so you have a lot of control over how you might want to animate this. Go like this. Yeah. So you have a lot of control over how you might want to mess with this. And what's cool about it is because you can animate these things, technically, what you could do is you could turn off the head of the pendulum and just use this as its own asset. That's the thing. That's why I designed it this way is that you can basically just use the chain as like, it's a rope rig. Like you could just use it as a rope. You could use it as a chain. You could use it as like a weapon because that's the whole thing with this like ball with the spikes. And why I put the arrow at the end is if you wanted this to be like a, like, you know, some kind of like a throwing weapon, it'd be a pain to animate because this kind of stuff is not easy, but you could do it. And what's cool is it's even got a claw machine which I'm very happy about. It's got a whole claw machine on here, which I'm going to scale it up so you can see it. And what we've got, if we've got IK fingers, little elbows, and the ability to switch the entire thing from IK to FK. So if you want to just a dangle, you can, or you can have it grab stuff with IK. Right? And if you guys haven't seen, um, actually, I don't know where you would have seen this. Let me pull up a page really quick on my website that you can't currently access. I'll show you what I used it for. The claw is our master. The claw chooses who will go and who will stay. Um... See this picture of Samus in the back? See the claw? I guess you can't really see it very well. Hang on. Let me let me go to the other page. There you go. See that picture with Samus? So that's something I did with the rig. I got rid of the base and I I constrained the base of it into the arm cannon and then you can just animate the length of the chain and it becomes a grappling hook and then you can do cool stuff with it so you can actually use the rig for some really cool advanced stuff but at its core it's it's just a pendulum right it's just a pendulum with a lot more options so i just go back to ball and tube and you can see it kind of breaks here because i've done a bunch of weird stuff to it and if i just go back here There you go. Simple little pendulum does a lot. So if that's interesting, I just thought I'd share. Oops. And uh, 
if anybody wants the rig, I will be making them available eventually. But if you want them early, you can join my mentorship or you can join the workshop. Both are linked below. But yeah, these are these are fun. In theory, you could also take the, the claw off of the pendulum itself and just kind of like, like you could just move the pendulum, animate the thing, and then just have the little claw thing walk around too. You could do that as well. Would it be safe to say this is good exercise for tail animation? Pretty much, yeah. That's the whole idea. I did not rig these, by the way. I designed them. I did not rig them. <laughs> You're currently working in the animation industry. I don't know. I don't know how you define that. I mean, at the moment, I'm mostly just doing YouTube. So I guess technically no, but I'm still like a part of the industry, I guess. Oh no, we've got spam. I don't know why you waste our time. Let's see. Hide user. Bye bye. <laughs> Caught that one pretty quick. Okay. Um, I think. I think that's about it. I don't know. We we don't have a lot of extra time. I'm kind of out of time now. I got to go do some other home stuff we did some demos actually we did get through a couple of demos that's good um i think what i'll do can we get a shot of the can shot of the can i don't know what we're talking about what are you talking about um do you animate with a mouse oh cat oh i'm at, I'm at my office um i'm not at home i have a physical office space um, oh, she's not here. Uh, do you animate with a mouse? I, I generally animate with a Cint Cintiq. When I'm doing demos, I just use a mouse, but I usually animate on a Cintiq and just physically do it that way. I find it more intuitive, more ergonomic too. Um, all right. So quick little end recap here, a little summary of some stuff. If you are, oops, 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 oops. Uh, uh. if you are interested in learning more Maya stuff, um, I'm going to be doing another Maya workshop. The link to this is down in the video description. This is a bunch of the stuff we covered last time. This is not a very like good page to give you information. If you're curious about it, um, you know, I'll talk about it more in the future. I'm just kind of giving you guys a heads up that it's coming. So here's a couple details about the thing. Last time we did it, we did a guest animator demo. We'll see if we can do another one. Uh, if you're interested, you know, fill out the form. That way I know that you're interested and I can send you a link when it, when I launch it. I'm, I'm thinking about doing this in like February-ish. Um, aside from that, I'm working on a video. It'll probably be out next week, hopefully. So, you know, watch that when it comes out. And uh, use the holidays to enjoy, relax, enjoy some food, family, friends, some quiet time to yourself, whatever it is. You know, you can watch all my videos. You can just binge the whole channel if you really wanted to. I mean, you could. Um, what Cintiq do I have? I currently have the Wacom Pro 24 Pen and Touch. I don't use the touch screen. It wasn't really worth the money for me. Um, the ergonomic, the, the, the arm it's on was worth it for me. Um, but there's a new one that just came out as well, the 27-inch with the smaller bevels. Bezels? Bevels? Looks nice. But I have the 24. And yes, I use Unreal Engine 5. All right. Uh, I have not used Roomba yet, but I've been looking into it. It's interesting. Everyone, thank you for being here. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being a part of this live stream. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Whatever you celebrate, have a good time. Be safe. Um, happy animating. I will see you all soon. We'll do another one of these when I launch the workshop or something. We'll talk about that. I don't know. In the meantime... You to each other, have a good time, and uh, I gotta find where the heck to turn off the live stream. Give me a second, and uh, you know, watch all my videos. Yeah, <laughs> bye everybody, have a good day, and stream. <laughs>